Hey, what is going on, guys? Hope you're having a fantastic week and weekend. Tonight, we've got a fun time. We're going to be talking about M-Wave and also answering your questions regarding home theater. So, fellas, Ryan, Jonathan, what is happening, man? I'm home from vacation. Yeah. I'm tired, as always. Dude, you tired of snow skiing. What <laughs> yeah, the heck? I'm actually you... tired. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm you not tired of skiing. Skis. I'm just tired. I mean, it wears your body out, and they... Uh, the resort that we were staying at, all the workers stayed at the top floor of where we were at. Right. So you hear him walking around, which was, it got better after a couple of days. But then there was like this massive hot tub that they all went and hung out with. And our <laughs> room was on the corner. Right. And unfortunately, in the location we were in, because we're in Colorado and they're like, oh, it doesn't get hot. There's no sure. air conditioning. And I need my room at like Arctic levels to sleep properly. <laughs> so we're sleeping with the window open. Right. And you can hear everybody downstairs. But it was a great time. We really enjoyed it. Um, went to Winter Park. It was the there was like 270 inches of snow, so it was fantastic. There, yeah. It wasn't icy at all. It was just um, it was fantastic. So I I really really like it. Liked it, and I hadn't been out there for like five years, so I'm really looking forward to going back. Sure. You and I talked about going together at some yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a family trip out there. Hopefully, somewhere. we both don't die at the same time. You know, no, man. That'll be good. That'll be good. But yeah, we're actually taking a our, our family trip up to Vermont. So we'll be going up there doing some snowboarding and snow skiing, I think in three weeks. So excited about that. So I got to crank out a whole bunch of videos before then. So then I can just kind of chill on the slopes and not have a care in the world. I'm going to blow up your phone and just make it miserable. That's okay. <laughs> I don't mind, man. I don't mind. I may not answer it, but I don't mind. So just well, randomly please. say, Michael. We lost the location. I can't find another suitable place for us to do M Wave. Oh man, don't stress me out on the slopes, man. I'll go off the side of a mountain. Let me say hi to some folks in the chat. That Brian. Got, that got dark. No, nah, not like intentionally. I'll just be just so distracted. No, not like that kind of off the mountain. So cool. Brian is asking if anybody's gonna be at M Wave, and we definitely have some folks. Um, speaking of that, you guys blew it up. So last year we had, I think we did 10 VIPs, five VIP gold and three VIP platinum. And so that went super quick last year. So we were like, okay, let's see if we can increase that. So we doubled it. We've got four scheduled home theater tours in one day, which is going to be crazy, insane, super busy, but we doubled the amount of VIPs, VIP gold and VIP platinum VIP gold sold out in 12 hours which was like, holy cow. Then VIP sold, all of those sold. There was 20 of those, and those sold in, what was it, 48 hours. So I don't know, man. That's just <laughs> wild. So I'm excited, man. We're going to have some fun. Tonight we're going to be talking about M-Wave. I know you guys got a lot of questions, so make sure you drop those in the chat. We'll be starring those, and we'll go through those and try to answer those as best we can. Ryan's got some updates on some things that he's planning. It's going to be a blast, guys. This is something that we kind of dreamed up last year, and in six months, we put this thing together. And it was just an incredible, incredible opportunity to hang out with some other two-channel and home theater enthusiasts, do some really cool comparisons, just have some great demos. We learned a lot from year one. And so we're implementing those changes into year two. We've moved it to an even better venue that's more conducive to the things that we want to do. And because of this new move, Ryan has some really cool ideas and just some ways that we can expand the event and just provide even more value to you guys and more experiences. And so uh, let me just say hi to some folks real quick. Brian, good to see you. Michael, Joe. Chris is in the house. Good to see you, Chris. Chris is coming. Mark Fox. What's up, brother? Uh oh, go back up. Richard, what's going on, man? Miles, Abba, Steve's in the house. Don, Donna missed you at the Florida Audio Expo, man. So he came on Saturday and I was there on Friday, but I know you had a good time. I saw your post over in the Youth Man Crew Facebook group. John's in the house. Randy, Jed, lots of folks, man. Tony's in the house. Good to see you, buddy. Randall. Awesome, man. Well, let's just go ahead and get into it. Like I said, if you have questions either in regards to home theater 
or if you have M-Wave questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat and we'll be answering those questions through the remainder of our time here tonight. And so let's just have some fun. So Ryan, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? Um, give us kind of a... Well, I want to know what Jonathan did over the week. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did I get about it, man? No, nothing that exciting. That's why I didn't even speak up. You're just, uh, you're just chilling. A buddy of mine came over last night. We were trying to figure out He's long said, hey, your surrounds are too loud. What's going on? So he came over last night, and we were kind of playing with that. We figured out it's not really my surrounds that are loud, but his mains that are loud. <laughs> so he, he's got an RZ50 from Onkyo, and mm -hmm. I'm running. I had a Denon 6700, and then now I've got a Marantz AV10. Uh -huh. My experience hasn't really changed. So when we're doing some testing, he'd done a lot of testing over at his house, and then we did the same test over here. These are like spl test basically so hook mm -hmm. up one speaker at a time unhook everything else and play interstellar at this spaceship launch and just see how loud that surround is at that well yeah. long story short our surround speakers are all playing alike but his main left center right are like 10 db louder mm -hmm. than mine um so we're trying to ferret that out i'm not really mm -hmm. sure where all that's going to land but it it either appears to be some way that the processes are handling that differently like onkyo is handling it differently mm -hmm. Maybe a way the speaker dynamics are being handled, although I don't think it's a limitation because he's got these big 4722 ends, which are like JBLs that got double 15s and a giant horn on them and everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I got the, it's Harman that's terrible. I got the 70 J1s, but they're rated for 125 dB, 120 dB capability. So it's we're not we're, we're talking like 99, 103, like that type of level. We're not talking the right. super high stuff. Anyway, long story short... It, it's kind of funny because he's been talking about this for years. He's been saying, why are your surrounds Every so time he comes over to your house, he says this. <laughs> right. And then and then it's not the surrounds at all. It's just that his fronts are way too loud. So that's where that's what I don't know why up. he focuses that on your house, because mine's the same way as yours. Like everything's level matched all the way around. <laughs> I, I don't. Whatever. I don't know. It's, it's pretty funny, though. To, oh, to find that out just that imagining way. Sheldon. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Glad he, he got some information or it seems like he got a little bit to the bottom of it because it was a little bit confusing yesterday. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad you got that figured out. Couch update. I need a couch update from you. Hey, they uh, I guess they were going to ship this week. They didn't. They're going to ship <laughs> next week. <laughs> well, was so, that because of the lights? That was I, the Maybe. Lights, right? You know, yeah, that was an excellent update. They had some. Oh, this is probably getting too detailed. Your audience doesn't care, but long story short, they we do care, man. Little flex lights that that were on the original ones, and then they mm -hmm. were getting ready to ship them with these giant like T-bar lights, look like street lamps, are huge, and they only bend in giant mm -hmm. arrangements. And I was like, ah, that's kind of lame. Can you go back to the original lights? And they're like, we don't make them anymore. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, customer service was great, and they mm -hmm. dug some up and yep. put them on there, and they're going to ship them out next week. Jonathan about had his slinky lights taken away from him. It would have been yeah. this. <laughs> Everybody wants a slinky. Maybe just would have been <laughs> hopes dashed. Yeah. Well, uh, they look good. So next week, and then another month or two till they arrive here in the U.S. I'm excited they'll for be you. In place and play in place for M Wave. So you know, get to. Oh yeah, to I'm excited about that. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta figure out again how to mount all your boss and transducers and stuff though. Oh yeah, there'll be some experimentation ahead. Have you gone into Nebraska I did. Martin flipped over the couch. I was laying on the floor doing? looking underneath him. <laughs> How am I going to do this? Did you really? Yeah, I did. Absolutely. You drove out there again to look at him? No, but the last time I was out there, I I purposely looked underneath to try to figure out how I was going to do this. Is it all metal frame or is it wood? It's metal frame, so there will be some creativity. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have to use some wood struts and mount them to the wood struts in between mm -hmm. the metal braces. Okay. All right. I'm excited for you. That's awesome. So M Wave. All right, man. Well, give us an update. So I've been oh. looking at some of the chats. I'm starring some. You guys are asking some great questions. Keep those coming while we're talking, and I'll keep an eye on those and we'll so start those. M Wave this year is going to be a little bit different than last year in that I want to run everything simultaneously, meaning the rooms are going to be operational for the whole weekend. Probably not Friday night, everything being right. up. Because Friday night's going to be more of like a get together, get to know people. We'll have some stuff going on. But yeah, on Saturday and Sunday, stuff. we want everything to be operational so that you guys can spend time where you want to. Um, it allows us to do more. 
instead mm -hmm. of having to focus on certain things. Mm -hmm. It's more of more taxing. I'm probably I might die after <laughs> this one, but you know, it's I think it's worth it. So the things that we're looking at right now, and I'm not going to name brands because this is still tentative. Yeah. Um, a lot of communication, well, a lot of yeah, talk there's still work. a lot of stuff going on. Um, brands coming together and figuring mm -hmm. out what's going on with the rooms and how things are going to come together. But I think we're going to have two to three full immersive. Why do you do that, Siri? Two to three full, actually three to four full immersive Atmos rooms. So yes. all the way around, like what you would see at Cedia, obviously they're not going to be in their own like boxes because you're going to have your own room, yeah. but full on Atmos rooms with height speakers and multiple base layer and multiple subs and all of that. Um, one of them is going to be a entry level mm -hmm. immersive theater. So it's not everything's going to be, you know, full hilt, um, balls to the wall type thing. We're going to have an entry level one where it's going to mm -hmm. be more approachable yeah. instead of coming up on six digits as far as price tags go. Yeah. Um, then we're going to do the comparisons again. So except I'm going to segment them out and run multiple at the same time. So I want to do amp and DAC in one room and then do uh, speakers. So we're doing the traditional speaker comparison, kind of what happened at M wave last year for the VIPs behind a acoustically transparent screen. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm doing it there is because I have to be very cautious and cognizant about my brands that come in because it's it can be very detrimental to a brand to put things against one another and not necessarily against, but compare things directly next to one another. So I have to be trying. I want to try and be vigilant of that for for my brand. So we're trying to limit that. I know that may be disheartening to some, but um, I think it's for the best. But when I say speaker comparison, I think this year we're going to talk about positioning, um, imaging, what happens when you add subs and crossovers and all of that into the mix with the speakers so that people can get an experience and idea of what's going on in those environments and what that dynamic, that dynamic holds. And then with that, in another room, I want to do subs, not like sub against sub, but showcase what subs do when you have one and then you have two and then you have three and then you have four. And then if you use a crossover to separate the medium to ultra low frequencies. So let's say you have a 24 inch that does zero all the way up to like 20 or 30 Hertz. And then you have your traditional 18s that do above that. What does that sound like? What does your frequency response look like when you're adding all of these subs in um, possibly what that looks like when you're comparing or mixing sealed and horn loaded subs or mm -hmm. ported subs, or if you're doing ported and sealed separately, um, that's kind of what where we're going with the subs, right? Because you guys can look at information on subs all day, but what people struggle with is who is going to facilitate and who has ever facilitated this where people can see what multiple subs look like against one another one two three or four and i saw tony who's setting that up <laughs> I'm just putting that up there. <laughs> yeah exactly that's probably i'm going to be probably moving back and forth between the speaker and the sub comparisons because that's going to be a lot of work yeah um that's but i think it's necessary i think it's really valuable to the end user and the attendees to be able to see that kind of stuff because those are the questions that come up all the time but why do you need multiple subs what do subs in different locations do what does positioning do why does the sub crawl exist what should how should you eq a sub all that kind of stuff um, so then i know i talked about putting brands against each other but i think the projector comparison's got to come back because that was a big deal mm -hmm. um this time we're going to have multiple professional meter sets last year we were limited on the meters that we could use but this year we should have multiple klein k10a's and multiple jetties there so this is mm -hmm. like the end all be all for calibration gear um, so everything is going to be professionally calibrated we're also going to do it so that it's out of the box so that people can see well if i'm not going to calibrate this what does it mm -hmm. look like against or not against but compared to like an epson what do they look like again there's no winners it's just yeah people being able to see things right next to each other and find out what the differences are. So that's going to happen. We're trying to do TVs. So what do OLEDs look like against the QLEDs or the QD OLED or LEDs and all of that and put them right next to each other and then calibrated and uncalibrated. That is still very much in the works. Yeah. Um, early stages. Of planning that's there. very early. And 
again, I want you guys to understand that a lot of this stuff takes a lot of work and planning and putting on and vendors and people and volunteers to be able to take this and make it work. Yeah. So there's always a possibility that things are going to fall through. Um, so here's, here's a good one. I like Randall. So <laughs> direct art. That should be but there. That might really? be really, that yeah. should be there. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That so should be there. I thought that's that was a pie pretty... in the sky wish, but that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So who are you talking to? <laughs> you can make that happen. Come on, man. Hey, we, we got Matt on our side, man. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt'll, Matt'll work his magic, man. Who well, I'm there? trying. I got a conversation with them on Friday. And so yeah. I'm I've already told them that I need like as many of your storms as I can get. Yeah. I, I have to because the, uh, their units for what they can do. This mm -hmm. is I'm on the storm train. Yeah. But for what they can do, it just makes a lot of this stuff possible. Yeah. So I've, especially for what you're trying to oh, do and I, it makes it so and... much easier to be able to do. So I've I've already told them. I don't know if you quite understood that I was serious, but I need as many of them as I can get because yeah. it just makes this so much easier. Um, Ryan, so I got please... another suggestion for you with the subs. You had kind of backed off that subject, but you had mentioned some things you want to do. <laughs> One of the things I thought a lot of people have liked over the years is just a frequency response check. So if you have really capable subs, you said you might have a 24 or a couple 24s mm -hmm. there or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Play play some 5 hertz sine waves. Play some 10 oh, hertz sine waves. Absolutely. Let people know this is what 5 hertz sounds like. This is what 15 hertz sounds like. Your sub that you bought from Best Buy when does 30 hertz. You're missing all of this. <laughs> yeah. You're you not know? getting any of this, man. <laughs> and, and let them feel it. That's cool. Well, tactical. and I think yeah. it'd also be really cool to be able to showcase I'm going to say it a certain way, so hopefully people yeah. understand yeah. what a dry sub environment feels like versus a wet sub environment feels like because let's as an example there was a theater at cedia and there was a theater at isc i'm not going to say who mm -hmm. but it was very dry and the reason i say dry is because the subs that were being utilized were mm -hmm. like theater subs right they could only get down to like 30 hertz so you got yeah. that chest impact sure but you lost all of the grit wobble. and motion and yep. wobble that was down below it so i call Things that can get low, like a wet kind of experience, because there's a lot more going on. It's all that feels like you pee and poop together. Your pants or what? <laughs> what are you? I don't know. Why you gotta I've go never, that way? I've never heard somebody because say because it's just a wet. It's experience. all. I don't know. That seems interesting. That's what maybe. I. That's what I was calling it. Okay. I'm if, you want, if, I'm, those, if you want, if you want to think that that that's the direction we went, then that's fine, and that's on you. It just sounded really interesting. Okay, yeah, whatever. Okay. But that's it. Just. It felt have very you dry. You ever heard that phrase? I, <laughs> I mean, wet. And I have dry. not. That's okay, a new yeah, term. I think you're making some He's stuff up. Ryan. That's yeah, why I am making it up. <laughs> I'm not. I never said I heard it somewhere. It's just what I was calling. I even prefaced this right, that this is right. what's going you to happen. I'm sorry if you don't understand, but anyway, that's it, funny. It, it feels like something's missing, and because yeah. it is, and you yeah. don't have the, anything congealing together, and you don't have that full envelope there because you're missing yeah. like 30 hertz of content gotcha. um, so i think that would be really that's really important to be able to showcase yeah. like jonathan kind of what you just said of what does this sound like when i take all zero to 30 out mm -hmm. and just put a big curtain there that says don't play anything and you guys will be able to experience the difference what are you missing i think that's really important and i think yeah. uh we're going to try and have some seminars on that kind of stuff yeah so we got some big people that... in the in the base community that are going to be there i mean yeah i think that's that's really important yeah this year i ideally what we want to do every year with M wave is take what we did last year figure out what worked well what didn't work and we had a lot of feedback from you guys that attended last year so we got some great feedback we're implementing that into this year's event we just want to keep improving it every year we want to provide you with more value every year we want to provide you with more information Every year we want to provide you with more experiences so that when you're building your home theater or when you're upgrading your home theater, you just have that knowledge and not something that you just read in a forum, not something that you, even I shared on my channel, but something that you physically experienced firsthand so that you can make a decision. Is that yep. projector right for you? Is that subwoofer right for you? Do you want butt kickers? Do you want tactile transducers? Do you want near field subwoofers? With those experiences, you can make better buying decisions on what works for you and what fits with your setup. So that's really the heartbeat behind that. And then, of course, you know, relationships. I just think that that's key. I mean, the friendships that we've got right here with these three fellows, 
um, is incredibly valuable to me. But you're going to get a chance to meet some people at M-Wave, hang out, get to know them, and build some friendships that are going to last. Jonathan, think about how much better off we would be if Michael never came to Kansas City last December. <laughs> Just be so much better. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's anyway, I, so Tony says, bring a change of pants and all yeah. of this. I think we need to have a Ryan's yeah. moist or brown note approved certification. Yeah. That we can I put on some of these rooms. Your T-shirt. It could just say, you know, uh, M Wave 2023 Moist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. Never mind. I'm not gonna. Y'all are gonna get me fired, bl- banned on YouTube, and I'm just moist. thinking. No, uh, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking mm. it can be interpreted too bad. So I'll just keep my thoughts to myself. No, that's what makes it good. You probably have like the most PG mind out of all of us here. <laughs> I don't want to have a t-shirt that says I got wet at M <laughs> I mean that's not appropriate, probably. <laughs> yes, it Especially is. Especially when most of them are due. Uh, we're gonna, gonna be okay, fine. If it's not a t-shirt, we're gonna I'm give sorry, out stickers. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh mercy. Or pins. mercy. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not booty shorts with that word on it, yeah. that one. <laughs> So let, me, let me throw this one out there. Chris, appreciate the ten dollars super chat. He says new current attendees, regardless of what level you're attending, with this new location, there will be lots to do outside of M Wave. Make extra time if you can. Cough up, up, down is fun. I think that's uptown. Okay, so I'm going to throw a plug to Chris because Chris did a phenomenal job at putting together a list of restaurants that he recommends and just some different things in the area for you to do. So on the website, when you go to um, attendee and then there's a drop down menu and then right underneath that is dining. Chris came up with that whole list. So appreciate you, brother. That's a great, great resource for M wave. And so definitely check that out, but appreciate the super chat and all the love and support, man. I think it's time for questions unless anybody has any. Okay. Any other, and you guys can drop questions about M wave during this, this time too. Um, This is just kind of what we're thinking about. Well, you keep starring. I've been starring. Wise. And um, we'll go from there. Awesome. All right. Let's jump on it, man. So is there an itinerary for M wave? So we don't have an actual schedule. That is one thing that Ryan, uh, he's been on vacation for the past couple of days, a couple of weeks. Months he's been gone for a while. <laughs> there, there's really not going to be as much of a need for his schedule as there was last yeah. year, yeah. Except for the seminars, what There'll I there'll be certain things that will be like okay, what if I you want to go to these, but again, I think we're gonna. What have I want to do for the seminars is I want to do like where the whole thing kind of shuts down for maybe 30 minutes, have a seminar, and then everybody can go back, so nobody feels like they're missing anything. Yeah. It allows it, one, it allows our vendors to have a break. Mm-hmm. And two, it allows everybody to come together for a class or a seminar to yeah. be able to get their stuff together. So that's kind mm-hmm. of my idea right now. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. Um, there's going to be a schedule with the seminars as they come up, but it's we've got to get our um, our vendor list knocked mm-hmm. out, and then we've got yeah. to put together um, the itinerary or the schedule for that. But yeah. it's coming, and they're seminars and classes and people being able to get together on topics is a big part of what this event is. Yeah. And it's something that I think a lot of other events kind of mislead or they put kind of hidden away. So I want to make sure that, um, that happens. So if anybody has any suggestions and serious suggestions, unlike mm-hmm. trying to make Michael moist, uh, <laughs> we need to make <laughs> sure that $20. you guys let us know. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, so we'll have, Everything. The best thing to do is if you're interested in M-Wave and, you, and all the news and the updates, just go to the M-Wave uh, website. I'll put that up here, MidwestAVExperience.com, and sign up for the newsletter. And so I send out a newsletter every time we get new updates about M-Wave, whether it's a new brand that's come on board, um, seminars, all that stuff. That'll be your kind of like your first line of defense. So definitely check that out. Ryan Smith says, maybe a strange question. Could you run the left and right tower speakers opposite polarity of center and surrounds in order to better blend with the subs, SVS Ultra Towers with side firing woofers problems? 
I don't know if no, that you don't do very that. well, right? Mm-mm. Like, don't I don't do know that. what the value you'd have, would be You'd have there. phasing problems with the rest of your theater. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, think about Atmos objects moving around your room, and as they transition between, like, a front wide or even a surround to a front, they're reliant on that stereo imaging mm-hmm. and phasing to work properly and to image right. If a speaker's out of phase, you can't tell it's between two speakers. It sounds like it's actually outside those speakers or in the room elsewhere, and that to tr- fix a sub problem you'd be creating a speaker problem and brian mm-hmm. can you maybe give us some more information on what's going on with your sub integration maybe we can help there if we have some more information there richard said i snoozed and lost on getting a vip so sorry man though he went super super quick georgia um for me this year super oh general admission that's what it was uh for me this year but one thing somebody else mentioned we're going to have a ton of stuff for you to do. I mean, it's not like you're missing out. You're missing out on some of the extra curricular kind of stuff, but there's going to be tons of stuff you'll be able to get involved in uh, with everybody. So super excited to be there, Richard. We're glad to have you back, bro. Hi, Smith Cinema. What is the best way to build a budget home cinema? Now, I mean, budget. if you're seriously on a budget, like shoestring budget, youth man deal all day, every day. Yeah. Find some good used equipment. Um, yeah, everybody's budget is different, you know, some people, a home, a budget home theater would be $10,000. I mean, if your budget home theater is a thousand, the lower that budget is, like Ryan said, th- probably the more I'm going to push you to used market. Cause you can just get so much further with your dollar. Um, you're going to have to buy older equipment, but there's still some great equipment out there. I rocked 40 year old speakers for about seven years in my home theater. And it still sounded great. So definitely some great youth man deals out there. Absolutely. Danny says, good to see y'all. Um, got to hear the Martin Logans. Yeah, the new motion speakers at Audio Advice. And wow, the 100s and two-channel listening sounds like they have subs connected with them. Very balanced as well. I think we're all kind of excited about that Martin Logan series. We were literally just talking about it backstage. And I've got a system coming from Martin Logan. Yeah. Mine gets here tomorrow. Yeah. Mine's going to be a little bit. What color did you get? Um, Black and. Um, you got the other one. The maple. I think it's walnut. Walnut. I think it's walnut. So I ordered the white ones um, or asked them to send me the white ones. So they said they're kind of not on back order, but they're, they're not as. What's the word? Available. Maybe that's the. So they're they're kind of waiting to send those to me. As soon as I get those, they can send them. Richard, uh, will there be a volunteer opportunities again at M Wave? That was a great way to connect and hang with other M Wave participants. Absolutely, an event like this, we have to have some people that that step up and say, "Hey, man, we we just want to give a hand." And what was super cool last year is even like set up and tear down. You guys were amazing. Um, we basically at the end of the, the show, we're like, Hey, if we could get 10, 15, 20 guys just to help us out, load this thing up, we'll go back to Ryan's unload everything and we'll just hang out in this theater room. And so some of y'all kind of got that VIP treatment. We ordered some food. It was a great time. Really. It was just a tremendous opportunity. No, we didn't order food. We had leftovers. Well, that's ordering food. I guess. We just yeah. ordered it earlier. It was a good day. time. And without those <laughs> volunteers, it would have been, yeah, it would have been rough. Dude, because, I mean, yeah, you and I were toast, and uh, so you guys were awesome. We had Croson. He was the, uh, what do they call him, the ratchet master? So he was I mean, <laughs> yeah, loading he everything. He, yeah. like, <laughs> he had all these ratchets going and ratchet straps, man. He did an awesome job. But, but yeah, absolutely. So, again, head over to MidwestAVExperience.com. There's an opportunity on there that says volunteer. Just um, sign up there, and I may be able to figure out some additional ways that we can um, use some volunteers. So Ryan, if you think of anything that we can add to that list, um, definitely. Oh, there's, there's always stuff. I can always yeah. find a, a use for somebody cause there's so yeah. much stuff to do. Yeah. Biggest thing is if you can just kind of let us know your availability, like, Hey, I'm flying in on this day. So I'll be there these days and whatever you need, man. So that's always super helpful. Miguel says, is there any video that can explain to me how to use the mini DSP in an easier way there is somebody that i think that could help them there's a gentleman in the chat who i always refer people to and that is home theater gamer 
Um, Brad did an excellent job at um, doing a, a mini DSP series. I think it's about a five video series and he breaks it down really, really, really easy. And so check him out. It's home theater gamer. And if you go to YouTube and just search for home theater gamer, mini DSP, you'll find that whole playlist. And so really, really, that would be my advice. You guys got any other resources? He can find some easy mini DSP videos. I don't so much. Um, I, I haven't really looked for one, I guess, because I've been in the hobby long enough. I kind of, it seems sort of intuitive to me, but I mm -hmm. understand where that's coming from because certainly oh, 10 years ago, I would have needed a walkthrough as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think the best thing with stuff like that is, uh, and we've said it a million times, to get a, uh, like a measuring mic and you can watch that stuff play out. The mini DSP is very visual. Everything you do, it reflects on the little graphs in the software. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that relates to real life as you're measuring with your calibrated microphone. Mm -hmm. And you, and stuff like that, I find personally, it's just easiest and most efficient to play and mm -hmm. just experiment. Um, I will say, if you get a measurement mic, though, Jonathan's going to laugh. Get an Omni mic. <laughs> 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 he liked that. He won. It's especially for new people. I mean, I still will use Roo for certain things mm -hmm. or REW, yeah. but for especially for new people, Omni mics just much easier to use you don't have to have a huge knowledge base in order to understand how it works and the ease at which you can do certain things like impulse measurements Audio is way easier than rew so if you have a little bit extra money because it is a little more expensive than the you mm -hmm. might think it's like 300 bucks or something yeah. for the kit it's just way easier and it's so much more convenient. I was oh. telling my I was telling my buddy here the other night. He mm -hmm. was trying to set up REW in my room, mm -hmm. and I was like, "I will bet you you cannot do this in thirty minutes or less because I've I haven't seen anyone set up REW in less than thirty minutes from scratch." And yeah. Omni Mike, I hand him a CD or I hand him a USB drive, mm -hmm. and I say, "Plug this into your machine and play it here, mm -hmm. like just a flash drive, right?" And say, "Plug this into your machine and play it," and then you're off to the races. You're you're measuring yeah. sweeps in thirty seconds. Yeah, wow. as and fast the other, as they can push the other play on thing the we found, and you were there when we showed this, Jonathan, is that the U mic has problems down below like 20 or 16 yeah. hertz. You get this massive bump in your frequency, and we did with the Earthworks and the Omni mic, and they don't have that. They measure pretty similarly. And the U mic is like doing something really funky. And mm. maybe it's because it's the U mic one and not the U mic two. But if you're going down low, yeah. Stay away from the U mic one because you're going to get weird measurements. Unless that's a sample variation. That's the only thing I'd say. No, I did it on multiple mics. Okay. It was on multiple mics. That's interesting. Yep. Was, yeah. Was, so here you can see kind of the topics that he broke it down. I think there's what, five videos there. So definitely check him out. Home Theater Gamer. I think it'll be a, a good resource there to you. Hi, Smith Cinema. How can I make a budget home theater? So that was similar to the other one, right? Yeah. I mean, again, everybody's budget is different. Um, I mean, there's some great brands out there. If you're looking new, um, even some that measure really well, the Monolith series, they've got some, I think they're in walls. Um they're budget friendly. Even their little towers, mini towers are, are super affordable. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot of brands that make affordable speakers. I mean, Martin Definitely. Logan even has some affordable stuff. It just mm -hmm. affordable and budget is different to every Correct. person. What your budget is and what yeah. his yeah. budget is. is just that's different. just a, that's a big, broad question. But for the people. general populace of what budget would be youth man deal, you're going to get way more bang for your buck out of something mm -hmm. used. That's already taken the depreciation hit that you can cash in on. Yeah. than buying anything new for oh, sure joan says is there a 2.1 receiver with hdmi and sub out under 600 button real specific here uh everything seems to be a home theater receiver so under 600 bucks hdmi 2.1 <clears throat> so i'm aware of I don't need one for that price, but SVS has their sound base pro, which I'm using in my living room. Yeah. It's phenomenal. I love that little thing, but it's, it's more than 600 bucks. Does it have HDMI 2.1? It may not have 
See, that's the caveat. Right? That's that's the tough one. Yeah, what do you need yeah. two point one? For? Oh, probably for gaming. Gaming. Uh, the one that I would recommend is the Power Node from Blue Sound. I've had really good luck with it, but I don't no. know. I don't think it's HDMI two point one. I'm looking. Yeah. It's why does the arc and why do you need a two point one with uh I'm sorry a two channel series with two point one? Can't you just do a five a five channel that you're gonna because it's a niche market to do a two point one with uh I'm sorry a stereo receiver with two point one? You're probably gonna find cheaper like a five point one receiver with two point a five point yeah, one receiver with HDMI two point one. This is really a tug <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like if you go to I, I always say if people want to say they want a cheap receiver, go to Costco or Sam's mm -hmm. Club. Because they have, at least mm. in the U.S. here, they have their entry level receivers are five or six hundred bucks, and they're they're really actually pretty fully featured, maybe seven hundred bucks, depending on which one you want. And they're yeah. they're like a good solid entry level receiver, and they're going to have all the newest features on them. Or so that kind of meets your price point and has everything you want. Just don't use all the channels. Yeah. Or if you, I can see what I can help you out with. I don't know. 2.1 is Denon and Marantz and Sony and all mm -hmm. of them are they 2.1 all the way through their, their all their newest line? all the main players like Onkyo and Pioneer and Denon and Marantz they're all they all got a 2.1 but it's all, so, Yamaha even it's just their newest line though for the most part that has the fully functional 2.1 yeah, but let me know because I can see if I can help you out there. I might have some stuff that I can work with you on. I don't know. I'm looking at the specifications for the power node and stuff, and I can't even see an HDMI version. So I'm going to assume it's HDMI 2.0. Mm -hmm. Might There's be kind of, a, kind of a niche thing to have a 2.1 with yeah. 2.1. <laughs> and I think Jonathan's absolutely right that it doesn't make sense to to funnel yourself into just 2.1 try even if it's 5.1 that's probably going to be a better option especially at that price point i guess and you gotta figure out what you're trying to accomplish there too because if you're doing gaming you can go straight into the um into your tv so you don't need 2.1 hmm. there and then use a a arc that's to come back great to point to yeah that's good the two speakers great point and so that's I, where i'm talking about like yeah that little unit would work great yeah. or node and my power so, node, so one thing about the power node is I'm using it to drive my Perlisten S7Ts. So Perlisten's flagship, and it does phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. It's I have no problems with it. Plus, it's super easy to stream to. It's a yeah. rune, rune endpoint. <laughs> it can come in with all of the other oh, blue sound and NAD stuff going on. Yeah, Tony's calling you out. I don't see it. I it's see because it, he got moist, okay? He, he learned a lot. <laughs> There is there is a question mark with the eARC stuff, and that's delay. <clears throat> Pardon me, audio delay sometimes introduces a little bit of latency. So if you're trying to do it for gaming, mm -hmm. which is the reason you care about 2.1, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, hits hit or miss. You read it on the forums; people complain about latency sometimes. Yeah. Audio latency. Good questions, man. Appreciate it, Bodhi. Good to see you in the house, Ryan. Is that a static picture behind you or the real thing? That's a picture. He always has a green screen. Yep. Today it he's was just a, uh, the F twenties. He's think. in a bedroom setup, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes it makes it easy. Yeah, so you guys don't see the bathroom door that's behind me. <laughs> exactly, the screen right there. So it's these come tomorrow. I've got a bunch <clears throat> of stuff coming tomorrow from Martin Logan. All my demo order comes in, so I'm excited about it. I think everybody should, but this is not in a room. This is just yeah. a picture. Yeah, they look super cool, man. They I'm do. Excited. I like the new look. And they've been getting good press. Audio Vice has a, a whole room. I saw one of their videos, and um, they've Gene already there. got yeah, they've already got it set up. It looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. So, and they set it up in like a living room setup because most of you guys don't have a dedicated theater room. So that's pretty cool. And some of you mentioned in the chat you've been to Audio Advice at their location. So good stuff there. Finster says, I have two PB, so these are SVS subs, 3000s placed diagonally in a large room. Will I see any increase to overall base and seat-to-seat -seat consistency by adding a third or maybe fourth? Um, if so, would it be better to add to the front or the back? So to me, that's where this whole mini DSP using the U-Mic 1, U-Mic 2, or the Omni mic, you're definitely going to need to have some of those tools in your belt. To be able to figure out, he says four was a typo. Just so you're aware. Oh, okay. 
So just adding a third sub doesn't automatically mean you're going to get better response. Placing a subwoofer in a room could interact with the other two subwoofers in a negative way. So that's why you need to be able to measure it, take a look at it, and see what it's doing in the room, and then use something like a mini DSP so that you can adjust the phase, you can adjust the polarity, all that fun stuff, time align them, um, use a tutorial like Brad's on walking you step-by-step step on how to integrate that. So I think a third one can absolutely help with better seat-to-seat -seat consistency, but just by adding a third sub doesn't guarantee that. Any other thoughts, fellas? You answered that well. Mm -hmm. okay. See, Tony, I am getting smirked. How about that? <laughs> Neil says, hey, youth man, I'm putting together a multi-channel high-end home theater. What are some of the best Class D amplifiers you've experienced? Love to get your opinion. And again, this is a collective thought here. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with Class D amplifiers. Most of the ones I've reviewed on the channel have been um, the AB amplifiers from Parasound. Um, I think I've done an H, Class H amplifier from Emotiva. Um monolith and so i don't have a lot of class d experience but ryan has a class d brand that he really loves to share who is that ryan you do <laughs> just like how you said he, like, that. he likes buckeyes that that was like uh yeah. linus from linus tech tips yeah. and on to our segue <laughs> <laughs> um no but i like buckeye <clears throat> primarily because they bring a high-end experience with a more entry-level price point and you're mm -hmm. not overpaying for a sleek looking chassis it's yeah, kind of bare bones pretty, they don't look ugly yeah. but there's something that you would think is going to live in a rack yeah, and they deliver good. phenomenal experience for not a phenom overly phenomenal price tag yeah so it's i i moved over to all buckeye for all of my amplification mm -hmm. um one of the reasons that I did it is because a lot of the amps that are on the market, especially multi-channel amps, they don't really, even if they're class D have a tremendous amount of power. And I realize that most people don't need a tremendous amount of power, but mm -hmm. I'm starting to see, especially in this group of enthusiasts. Um, and I'm sure to a lot of the guys that are watching that a lot of us like it loud. And if you don't have the power to be able to get to that volume level before you run into distortion, mm -hmm. well, then you're just creating your own problems. So Buckeye has several different options and it just fits the bill really, really well and doesn't really impact your wallet yeah. as much as a lot of the other brands do for sure. I'm trying to see one of these comments earlier. I mean, a lot of them use the same, the same amps anyway, Hypex and Purify and they're just designed a little bit differently, but they're all very similar. It's amazing how much variation there is in the price points neil i might give you a little hint too and i don't have anything against buckeye so that's not i'm not con, uh, contradicting what ryan suggested but i know a lot of high-end space recommendations kind of go towards jpl synthesis series for instance as one mm -hmm. example uh jpl synthesis they have like an eight by 300 amp it's very expensive mm -hmm. interesting enough if you look at the spec sheets it is verbatim the same as the crown 8300. Now, this is all under the Harman umbrella, so you can make of that what you will. You can get a Crown 8300, uh, eBay refurbished from different places for uh, about $2,000, maybe a little less. It has eight channels at 300 watts. Get a couple of those, you can cover 16 channels at 300 watts for four grand. And in a nutshell, it's going to be pretty much the same thing as a JBL synthesis amp, which is extremely high end and mm -hmm. very pricey. So you know, there's a, they almost have the same chassis. It, it's remarkably similar. So kind of put that in your pocket and give a little thought. Um, Crown 8300 is pro audio side. JBL Synthesis is elite home theater side, but it's probably the same amp. So, you know, there's little, there's little entryways like that to kind of yeah. find your way into the high end without spending high end money. That's always a positive. I know somebody mentioned, you know, turn off amplifiers and, I'm sure they're great too. Turn off Class D Amp 16, but I'm sure that's a pretty penny there. So it really depends on your budget, what you're looking for. Um, make sure it has enough power that you know will run your system adequately. And um, but I think these are all some just great options, at least to yep. consider. 
do some research on, figure out what works best. I think for you. with Buckeye, if you did 16 channels of class D, if you did the 502s, which is over 500 watts per mm -hmm. channel, you would be at just over like 42, 4,400, something mm -hmm. like that is where yeah. you'd be at. Yeah, that's nice. Man, that's yeah, that's crazy. I, I can't. That. I wish that price point was there when I first built my theater. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well. Chris says, folks, also side note, if you're not in the Discord, get there five days ago. So he's talking about the M-Wave Discord group, and you can find that over on the website, MidwestAVExperience.com. If you guys like to communicate throughout the week, just a great resource. There's a lot of questions that are answered and asked there. Um also, some updates on M-Wave, and you can get your questions answered over there instead of just waiting, you know, for next week's podcast. So, appreciate the suggestion there, Chris. Three and four Carpenter says, look forward to Martin Logan motion series to be on display at M-Wave 2023. Make it happen. It, it'll be there. So, we're, we're working on it. I think it'll be a great demo, especially a great way for them to kind of promote that new series. Mm -hmm. It'll be there for sure, even if I have to bring my own gear. Jason says, hey, boys, I watch both of your home theater tours on the Youth Man's channel, and I just bought a new subble for yesterday. Congratulations, Jason. I'm glad we could have that impact on your wallet. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Man. I get so much heat from people, man. They're like, dude, you cost me a lot of money, Michael. Like, all right. I watch your videos. I get excited about something, and I realize I need it. First <laughs> time I met Jonathan, he cost me several thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the way it works, man. We get we get uh, nabbed you know, near each other and, and, uh, well, this so, is cool. Let me have to go do all of this stuff after the day before I told my wife that I was done. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Speaking of unnecessary upgrades for uh, M wave, I think Sheldon's getting ready to buy another eight subwoofer. So he should have 16. Are you kidding what? I think he's considered having 16, 18. Wow. What? Okay. So, <laughs> if you, so if you Just guys, goes. Oh my got the god! VIP gold, VIP platinum. Sheldon is on one of those home theater tours. Yeah. I did a video on his. Had uh. a chance to check it out. Sheldon has eight eighteens up front, stacked, sealed, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, he has, I think, twelve twelves in boss kind of platform. It's Hover. an yeah. it's an unreal, crazy over the top setup. He's about to do eight. More he stuff. is. I, I shouldn't speak wow. for, for, for 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 sure, but he has reached out. He's making the connections. He's trying to wow. buy eight more from a guy in Iowa. Yeah. Oh eight, eight more. I'm I'm looking Goodness. at adding at least one, possibly two, twenty fours to my room. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I'm not with or... subs. I'm not buying any <laughs> more subs. Who, who are you looking at? Ascendo Stereo Integrity. Uh, who else? I won't say who. Up? Okay. What other brands even make a 20? Well, I don't, I'm not going to say who because it's not out yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So I don't want to, nice. I don't want to say nice. anything. Yeah. New Clips was making one. I'm just kidding, guys. Just <laughs> I was kidding. like, what? <laughs> Brian's like, man, I didn't hear that. I I'm totally not hear this. Just having some fun. Just having some fun. <laughs> Randy's got a beat on that right there. <laughs> Sheldon <laughs> has lost, lost his, mind. his mind. No, he hasn't. <laughs> For anybody that hasn't wa watched Sheldon's. Or Youth Man's uh, um, oh carp gosh. video or Sheldon's home theater tour. Just go watch what Michael looks like when he's sitting on the hover base platform. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's insane, man. That's funny. Sheldon's the biggest base head, 314 Carpenter says. Uh, so no, funny. he's not Doug level. <laughs> There's some, well, and I mean, Scott he's close Newby. though. Scott Newby, oh yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah, and Mark, yeah. There's, there's a lot of guys. There's some crazy ones of top, us, man. So you guys are, you are bad influence on each yeah, other. Yeah, but you know, happens. you can always, if you have too much, you can always turn it down. But if you don't have that enough, you can't go, you can't turn it all the way up. That's <laughs> that how true. I look at it. Buy yeah. more subs. Oh boy, that fixes a lot of problems, man. We should put that on a shirt. Buy more subs. Right. Buy no. more subs. I like that. Yeah, we can do that. Write it down. Get off the <laughs> I'll put it on the M Wave website tonight. I'll, I'll design great. one. Buy more subs. All right. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Dre says, Hey, guys, I plan on attending you this year. Appreciate it, man. I think you're going to have a blast, get a lot of education, and just meet some really cool guys there. Have you guys considered doing a soup to nuts calibration demonstration? Maybe. So there's going to be 
I've had some talks with some people about talking about calibration. The problem with doing something like soup to nuts is that to do a proper That's calibration a can take a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And it's probably better to talk about the theory behind it than going through and doing an actual demonstration. Um, that's something we may be able to do mm -hmm. another time, but it would kind of have to be a dedicated <clears throat> event because proper calibrations, if you're doing the whole theater, can take a long time. I mean, it took me multiple days just to get my subwoofers to, to behave together. Correct. Um, it, it, it's exhausting. It's worth oh. it, but it can take a long time. What? Derek says, you've been cost me $5,000, two PV-16 ultras. <laughs> Don't tell your wife that. You know, I th I think I've got a, like a conspiracy theory. A lot of you guys use my channel and my <laughs> name to get you out of trouble. That's like, another shirt. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you know, like youth man told me I, I needed this in my life. I'm missing this down here in this frequency. And I saw his graph. <laughs> <laughs> Mine doesn't look like that. You know, so I saw the squiggle. <laughs> That's right. And get me. I says no comment. That's hilarious. You guys are funny, man. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Perfect. Randy says, how much overlap will there be? I want to be a sponge and soak up all this information. So if things are running simultaneously, I won't be able to do that. Hopefully it will be minimal. When I say things are running simultaneously, I mean, it's going to be kind of like expo style where people are going to run rounds of the same thing. So you're mm -hmm. not going to, it's not like we're going to do one thing and that one thing is going to extend multiple days and we're only covering one thing once it's, we're going to do the same thing, shorten it to a point where we like can all get day it long, through it yeah. and then repeat that, yeah. um, every X number of times. Yeah. So that's the idea behind it, at least right now, because if I tried to do all of this so that everybody could go to everything, this would be yeah. like a multi-week thing. Yeah. So it's the seminars and things are going to be things, ways that hopefully you can go to all of them. Um, we try and keep this event small for this exact reason. <laughs> so you should be fine. You, you should be fine. That's a big point behind the design of the event is making sure that people can be it as much as be have access to as much as possible and right. allow us to have as much impact on your wallets as we can. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up, man. Youth man made me do it. I still blame youth man for the SR 8015. Man. I'm telling you, I, I get this all the time, man. You're just everybody's kryptonite. <laughs> yeah. Richard, you take notes tonight, man. You, you, and send me an email or a text message. <laughs> all the, all the t-shirt ideas we come up in this show. All right. Brad says, will the new Martin Logan motion series be there? We did answer that one. So yep. yes, we do plan on doing that. Cool. Let me jump over here. Brian, appreciate the $20 super chat. Brian says, excited to experience the various tactile demos, among other things at M-Wave. Curious, do you guys, Ryan and Jonathan, usually listen at reference? We all know Michael's hearing is delicate. Wow. Michael brings earplugs. Delicate. <laughs> i'm just cautious i do this You're for a, a living, living man. moist little flower michael I've, no i've got to protect my hair <laughs> Delicate, man. You, moist little flower you. you guys don't even care man um, uh what do, you, what do you say to that i will say that jonathan and i listen quite spiritedly jonathan for, for audio spirited. demos for audio demos i'll ref listen to reference for full-length movies if i'm down here i don't do that i'll yeah. i'll listen to a movie if i'm by myself at like negative eight yeah, uh, if my family's down here with me, I'll listen at negative 12 or negative 14. Yeah. But if I'm playing a demo and I got company over here, it's going to reference and you yeah. guys are going to enjoy it. I yeah. usually listen to my music at reference, uh, movies minus five to minus eight. Yeah, I don't it may know. not come across that way because my subs are quite hot 50 dB hot, 75 dB hot. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah, on. but at, at a lot of the demos <laughs> that Jonathan's been at, I'll look over and he's over there going. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah. Unless he's sitting in the Valencia chairs. Now, so, now, in order to that question to answer that question, I actually do limit my receiver. I have a Den and Morant series. <clears throat> I do limit my receiver to zero because sometimes yeah. when you're listening to stuff, yeah. it just sounds great, and you're like, 
I'm just going to keep turning it up. <laughs> and then you really, I mean, you really do. You go back to your tinnitus, you're sore for a yeah. couple of days. It's just yeah. not worth it. So I, yeah, I've, it's like having a nanny on there. I, yeah. I limit it in the, in the GUI that I can't go above reference and I have yeah. to go through a bunch of menus, to turn it off. So I don't, I, I just, so that way, you know, that yeah. you turned it off. Reference is deemed pretty safe. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like, you know, the hearing spectrum stuff, as long as you're not doing it constantly, it's not going to mm -hmm. hurt you. You're not yeah. going to get tinnitus from it. Enjoy it. But, but when you turn it up to plus 10, cause it sounds great at reference, that's going to start hurting you. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't usually go above reference. Yeah. Well, I never go above reference. I'll say that. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. And all right. For my defense, when I have people over, I have no problem doing reference, but I always ask them to, I'm like, Hey, let me know at any point if this is like just uncomfortable or you'd no. rather me turn it down. Unwanted personal anybody, harm is the best way. I've never had anybody <laughs> say, turn it down. They usually just have a big grin on their face and go, this is cool. This is cool. Uh, yeah, and keep in mind, we're talking calibrated reference, too, because reference, right. if you don't have a calibrated mic and you're not looking it over, you don't even know right. if you're actually Yeah, but your reference. subs are above, probably above, well above reference, though. That's Damn. fair. But I'm so just saying, like, for me. We're mains. saying reference, but we're we're well above <laughs> reference anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just, next next just question. The just the <laughs> oh, golly. All right. Here we go. So Ryan says, uh, having phase cancellation between towers and two PB three thousands. Odyssey says towers are out of phase. They aren't out of phase. Centers and surrounds aren't canceling with subs, however. Uh, so this is Ryan. This was the question about if he should invert the polarity of his towers mm. earlier, and he's providing. Oh, I see it right here. This right here. I wonder if his subs are out of phase, mm. and Odyssey's just not fixing <clears throat> it. Okay. I wonder like if he internally. I wonder if he reversed the polarity on one of his subs, if it would fix it. Okay. Ryan, you got to get a calibrated mic. You're just guessing otherwise. Get a calibrated yeah. mic, run one sub, measure the sweep, record it. Get an average recording on it. Turn mm -hmm. the other sub on. When you turn the other sub on, see if your average sweep is above now with both sub playing or it's below. It'll either be 3 dB higher, it'll be 3 dB lower in general. Now That's how you're going to tell if your subs are Jonathan in is so used to using Omni Mic that he's now saying average your sweeps, and that's not how <laughs> REW works. Well, <laughs> record your sweep in <laughs> REW. Get a, get a graph of Get an screen. Omni Mic <laughs> and do it right. <laughs> I'm telling you how to fix it. Get a, get a, uh, get a calibrated mic. Measure your sweep. Yeah. One sub at a time. Just do the, do the sweep, right? You get your graph. You know what it is. Add the second sub. Does your line go up or down with the second sub added? It should go up. It does go up. You know you're in phase for your subs. Now, do the same thing on introduce the mains. So now you got two subs playing that you know are in phase. Introduce your main. See if you got any weird, like, turn off smoothing. So you got no smoothing. Look if and see if you got any big deep around your crossover frequency between your subs and your speakers. See if... See if you can tell if the line is going up or down around the subwoofer frequency when you add your main speaker. It needs to go up as you add your speaker. If it goes up, if you add it a little bit, if you've summed a little higher by adding a speaker to your subs, you know you're good. Repeat the same thing with your second speaker. Everything you add should make your average line go up a little bit. If you have something where it goes down or if you're introducing some sort of big dip, Further mm -hmm. up on the frequency response, you got a phase problem. But it may not go up entirely over the frequency range. It may no. go down a little bit, but in, in places, the sum, but the, the sum, sum will be yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ryan and says you, he has a you might one. Otherwise. He's got subs aligned and in phase with the mini DSP. Okay, so you've already done this test. So then so, try and bring the towers in and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then you've got if you're if you're using your e, your auto your auto EQ on your processor, it should be kind of taking care of this distance setting for you, and that's the phase. I mean, phase is like a equivalent to a distance setting, but you also on the back of your subs, you'll have like a typically, and I don't know about those new SVS you're talking about, but typically you'd have like a zero to 180 degree phase mm -hmm. inversion. You can also play with that and see what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I assume you've run auto EQ at this point, right? If you haven't, start there because that'll set your distances, and it should probably maybe he problem. needs to invert both of his towers so they're in phase with each other but they're currently out of phase with the subs but then they'd be out of phase with the rest of the speakers he wants Not if he inverts everything oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> man, you're gonna have him all messed up i would ignore but, all but this maybe advice. it's just he needs to invert both of his subs i mean maybe they're just it, out it of could phase be that you could invert you could invert both your subs I would you would see something like this typically more with a do-it-yourself guy yeah. that some mess something this, up or uh, 
But this is why Sorry, I was Rob. talking about when somebody's like soup to nuts calibration. This is why <laughs> yeah, you always run into stuff like this, especially with subs and trying to get yeah. things integrated. And it's just a get on ABS forum time. or Discord forum and yeah. ask if there's anyone in your area that can come by and you'll buy them a beer and a pizza, yeah. you know, and, and spend an afternoon on it. It's pretty fun. A lot of guys enjoy doing it. I do enjoy yeah. doing it. Ryan enjoys doing it. You know, it, it's something that we enjoy. So it's not a chore. Yeah, Ryan works for hats. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a hat. He's good, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan says, other than Facebook Marketplace. There's a lot of Ryans. <laughs> there's a lot of Ryans. Every time uh, you say that, I think you're talking about me, and then I realize no, it's another comment. No, other than Facebook Marketplace, because he doesn't have Facebook, where do you buy used gear that isn't beat up like half the items on eBay? AVS um, forums. A lot of places. Audio Gone, US Audio Market, or Audio Mart. Mm-hmm. There's a Canada, Canada, one of those two. Canuck or some, something, something like, like that. that. I feel like things are really moving to Facebook more and more. Yeah. I I understand why you don't have Facebook, but for, you know, you maybe you get it for the marketplace. Or <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> of stuff. Don't go on the feed. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, I, I, you, Craigslist used to be Craigslist used to be competitive with Facebook, but Craigslist is like a barren wasteland now. It is. I don't ever look at it now. I used no. to buy everything it's on Craigslist. It's all a scam on there now. I know. People hit you up and they yeah. don't have the stuff. I think no, no um, matter what you click on, it's all car deals. You could you search for anything and it's like fifty cars come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I used to use offer up and let go, and then I think let go ended up getting bought out by something. So then there was only offer up. Yeah. But and then know, you get that car deal, them. and then they say it's being shipped from a Nigeria on a plane, and they need <laughs> money first, and all. Uh. That's funny. Oh boy, mm -hmm. yeah, no kidding. That's funny. So MR1, I'm going to flag yours. I'll hit that later. He called you out. Yeah, that's okay. No, I don't mind being called out. I just Ryan and Michael, I I'm going to stand for one more question yeah, and buddy. I'm going to drop because my wife wants to date with me tonight and I want Dude, to do that too. rock so on, man. I appreciate it. Do it. All right. I love it. Are you getting sick? I've been sick. I'm over yeah. it, but I haven't yeah. got the voice back yet. Yeah. I had I a flu it. this week. I thought you were going through puberty again. I was like, that's oh, weird. Not. <laughs> weird. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> All right. It seems like you brought up a traumatic event for Jonathan. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> Not again. Uh, Bodie McBoatface says, "Why are the white Martin Logans limited? They look nice. They're um, not I don't limited. think they're limited. They're just very they're just, popular. Yeah. So they just think about it. I mean, I'm kind of last on the list. They've got to fit, fulfill dealer orders first. They want to get that out because they're selling those." You know, so that's what Michael reviewers... tells himself is the other reviewers have published their reviews. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just kidding. Not the white ones, though. They got, <laughs> Not they the got white the ones. Black. That is true. And they had to it visit, actually, they had actually to visit a dealer to the get them. Ones. Yeah, for sure. That is true. All right. Let's find a good question for. All right. Here's a good question. Jonathan answered this one. Danny says, what should you upgrade first, your speakers or processor? I like this question and I have an absolute answer for me. I would say speakers. Because processor that? just doesn't matter that much. That's my opinion. I, mm -hmm. That's my opinion. And I'm going to probably contradict Ryan's opinion on this. That's fine. We both have different, our own personal opinions. But I've gone through so many different receivers. I seem like I change receivers out about every couple of years, and I trade and listen to things more often than that. And I don't think I've ever really seen anything that was like Jonathan just bought a new processor, vastly different. <laughs> well, yeah, I did, and I got and I got. Uh, listen here, be. I came from the X sixty seven hundred H. I went to the AV ten, right? So yeah. higher end. Oh, that's hilarious. Brand. Yeah. There's not very much different sound. I get all these. Did you text change messages. your speakers between that time? No, but I get all these text <laughs> messages. I got it from multiple people, including crap. you, Ryan. Including, how do you like Davy Tim? It sounds the same. I hate yeah. to say that, but yeah. it's the truth. Now you knew it was going to sound the same. I, I I hoped it would sound different for the money, <laughs> but I kind of expected it to sound the same, and it does. And I don't have a problem with that because I didn't buy it for a different sound. I bought it because I want two more dang channels. Yeah, and you got to pay through the nose to get those two extra mm -hmm. channels. Yeah, that's true. And I, I know that going in, but uh, you but I just think the processor differences are pretty slight, and the speaker differences can be dramatic. Mm, yes. Well, I think the other to your point of speakers, if you find the speakers that you like and you're not compromising, meaning you're not just getting their budget entry level, knowing that down the road you want to upgrade to maybe the mid tier, maybe their higher end. If you save up, sell some stuff, afford it, pay for it, and you get the speakers you want, those things can literally last you decades. 
There's mm-hmm. not, I mean, I, processors aren't going to do that. They mm-hmm. change. So I know what you're going to say, Ryan. He's like, mm, if you buy a $30,000 processor, yeah. Well, no, it, it that's might. not what I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but in the, in I'm most railroaded people, here, no, in most people <laughs> set up, if you buy, say a Denon Marantz, Pioneer, well, Pioneer doesn't really make a processor, but you know, if you buy kind of a normal processor, it has a short lifespan. You're probably talking five, maybe 10 years, but you can get 20, 30, 40, 50 years out of a set of speakers and still enjoy that as long as you can take care of them. You're if not they're good like, speakers. Yeah. If you're just not, and again, that's why I caveated that. Is that a word? Caveated? Not really. <laughs> just, caveat? Like, we know what yeah. you mean. That's why I prefaced. Michael's no longer early. smart. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony couldn't even spell smart. He spelled smart. It smart. <laughs> um, but that's why I mentioned earlier, you know, as long as you're not going for that entry level, a lot of times I know I've done that to save a buck. It fit the budget, but then I'm always wanting that next tier or two tiers up from that. Um, so really figure out what you want. I, I, I agree. I think upgrade your speakers because here's the other thing if you've got let's just face it if you've got crappy speakers and they just don't sound well they don't measure well i don't care if you put a a trinov or a storm on it it's still going to sound like a mediocre system your speakers can physically only do so much if they can't handle you know a good amount of bass they're going to bottom out. They're going to sound muddy. They're going to sound horrible. If the mid range is, is garbage, there's only so much of a processor can EQ to try to fix that, but you can't fix a bad speaker. So if you get good quality speakers, I, I think there's more value in that. I agree. Well, um, then, and, and then Ryan, before you, before you say you disagree with us, consider that like some of us, yourself included, have stopped using EQ to a large degree. The processor a lot of time is all about uh, is about how EQ. can I disagree with both of you? You both oh, you don't know you can you can yeah. you but said uh, you no, said no. processor no, or did you I say said, you said speakers? Said you should, no, he said speakers. speakers. I said speakers. Okay, so and I'm, you were the I'm, one on the processor side. No, <laughs> okay. Well, we we expected you to go there. We no. heard you say. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, well, okay. hey, I'm it's gonna okay. There's room for both opinions. Depends on what you have. So. I always recommend that you buy a processor or ADR based on the capabilities, channel counts, or anything that you need. If you don't need anything, there is absolutely no point in upgrading your processor. Mm. So like if you needed HDMI 2.1 on a processor, I totally get it. Yeah. But your system is only going to be as good as whatever is going to be able to drive the sound mm-hmm. that is coming out. And that's your speaker. So the important thing is, like I said with the processor is, Make sure that you're buying something at a specification that is going to be able to do what you want to do. Yeah. I will never suggest that somebody buy entry level gear because it is always going to leave you yeah. something to be desired, right? Yeah. And I just don't think it's a good way to go. I think your speakers are more important than your processor because if you don't have good speakers, regardless of what your processor is, it's yep. going to sound like butt. Yep, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, Jonathan, as always, man, we love having you hang out, but I want to send you out because I want you and your wife to have a great time tonight on your date night. So get out of here, boss. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Appreciate it, buddy. Mm. All right. Michael has a question. He says, what's up with the remote situation? I tried the Sofa Baton, both versions, and they suck. They do. I found a URC MX, but I haven't seen any videos of you guys endorsing them. I too reviewed the Sofa Baton. I think it was the X1 version. Did not like it. Super, super buggy. Really didn't have a whole lot of like functionality to it. There's no touch screen. Um, I personally did not like it. And then I bought it thinking that Michael couldn't be that wrong and it was terrible. <laughs> no, it's a booty. So then there was another one that I reviewed. It was the Sofa, I'm sorry, not Sofa Baton. It was the um best joy super remote they really need to work on some marketing there um i think they could have come up with maybe a better name but (laughs) much better remote i didn't really have any issues with its functionality Mm -hmm. but their software 
needs a lot of improvement. Um, it's not user friendly at all. Certain things are labeled and you're, I struggled with trying to figure out how do I make an activity? You know, basically I want to create a button that says watch movie. And when I hit watch movie, I want it to turn on my projector. I want it to set it to this input. I want it to turn on this processor. I wanted to do all these things. I had no idea, like, where do I even go? I had to reach out to him and say, I feel like I'm a pretty smart guy, but you haven't made it very intuitive on what button I need to click to create an activity. It's not super user friendly. So they said they're working on it. So that hopefully the good thing, that's software, you know, and that can be updated um, over time. And so hopefully they'll get that. But I still don't think that was quite there yet. Um, URC, I've only had one over the years. And that was many years ago. And, and everybody said, oh, it's so customizable. You can make your own backgrounds and graphics. And, and it's true. You had to have, I had to actually get the software from somebody that had it because it's not readily available. Typically, URC is meant for custom integrators. Um, so I can only speak on their old models. I don't, I don't, you don't really hear about them much more nowadays. So I don't know how much better they've gotten, but it wasn't for me either. It was like building a website and you had to, and you're a web developer. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I understood how it worked and, and that's cool to make custom things. And I get it that, you know, but for the average person, you should be able to just say, okay, I have this remote, you know, let's say this is your heart or not harmony. This is your Marantz remote. And you say, okay, I've got this Marantz receiver and give me all the functionality of it. Instead, you say, okay, I have a Marantz receiver and you physically have to map a power button. You have to map a left button, a right button, a down button. And so like every single button. Which is great. Use, it is. It's custom. It is great, but it's a lot of work. And if it you don't want that or friendly. don't know yeah. how to do it, it is a huge pain in the butt. Correct. My recommend, I have two recommendations. First, buy a used Harmony off eBay. Mm-hmm. Probably the easiest thing to do. They're, They're getting, getting expensive, more expensive. Yeah. They are. Um, two, if you can, <laughs> if it's within the budgetary constraints, IP control system. They're mm. bigger. They're more expensive. They're kind of what URC wants to be, mm. but you're going to pay for it. And the problem with many of them is that you cannot program them yourselves. You have to pay yeah. a dealer or custom installer to do it for you. So we're so, talking control for Savant. Crestron? RTI, Crestron, RTI. Um, Elon to an extent, yeah. um, all those. I do RTI mm -hmm. and it's they're awesome because it's yeah. not just your home theater. You can do full automation in oh, your home, wow. which is fantastic. Everything. And they're the best because they're closed ecosystems. You're not reliant on anything else. You're not sending out data. You're sure. not doing any of that. So they're going to be the best, but it's yeah. you're definitely paying for it for sure. Yeah. So along that same lines, Michael says, let me turn this one. Oh, so this was same guy. So Michael, he mentions, is YIO -Y -I -O remote to real? So that is, a, that is the only remote right now that I think has a chance to replace Harmony and do it really well and very well could easily exceed what Harmony does in functionality, but also in aesthetics and build quality and everything. Um, it's got, I think it's aluminum chassis, color LCD. It's beautiful and it seems fast. It's got a fast processor in it. Unlike the Harmony, it that's my biggest complaint with the thing. They're so slow. It's like you you say you swipe up and it's like you got an iPhone four. Oh, worse it's, than that. It's, it's, it's like, like it forgot to do it and it was like, oh, oh, I'm supposed to do something. <laughs> oh, and then it supposed, you want me to do something? You want me to go to activity? <laughs> so that's my biggest gripe with that. But yeah, YO Remote 2. Um, if you look that up online, I've got a video. I did an uh, kind of like an interview, like a live stream with them. And uh, then there's another video that I talked about that. So I think it really has potential. Um, I'm in communication with them. They just don't have the remote ready yet. So part of their issue has been like everybody else is getting supplies and parts um, due to the pandemic. And so hopefully they're getting pretty close to um, to getting those units out, at least for uh, consumers. And they've already got their, I guess, pre-order um, on their website and everything. So definitely keep an eye out for them. As soon as I get one, man, I would love to be able to, I just got my fingers crossed going, okay, man, let this thing just kill it. I would love it.
Please don't. Uh, it, is a, it is a little, yeah, exactly. It is a little bit more expensive than Harmony. I think it's going to be around 350 in the US. So it is kind of expensive. But if you look, again, if you look at the alternative, okay, you can buy a sofa baton for a hundred bucks and it's doo-doo. Okay. It's, it's not good. You can spend a lot more than that on Crestron, Control 4, Savant, they and, will you have to have, and you have to have somebody to program it. So, a lot more, and you're, you're stuck into that ecosystem. <clears throat> so if you're looking to be able to control this thing, set it up, have a great remote build quality, to me, the YIO Remote 2 has the most potential. Um, so I'd, like, it, like Ryan said, I hope they get it right. I really, really am rooting for these guys. It's a small company. I mean, there's only like two guys, two, maybe three. I think that run the business and they're just enthusiasts. And so they're trying to build this product and they've already had a previous remote, but it was more of a DIY. You had to like build it and solder it together, but this is a, you know, a consumer driven type of product that they can just ship it to you and it it's up and running. So, um, but it looks super, super promising. So at least give those guys, um, you know, check them out. So, but I'll let you know as soon as I get something, Danny, appreciate the super chat, sir. Let me come back over here. He said, y'all have me laughing. Thanks for your constant support. Got me thinking. Good deal, man. Appreciate your support, man. I love my community. You guys are rocking. And uh, we're just super, super grateful for you. All right. Okay, here we go. He says, let me repeat myself. Um, is HDMI 2.1 was a lie? So I think that's a question about, he's wondering, is HDMI 2.1 a lie? I uh, think is what's going on. Yeah. No, HDMI I mean, it, 2.1 has a, a place. The problem yeah. is, is that <clears throat> there's a spec and nobody's really held accountable to that spec, especially yeah. cable manufacturers. And it just creates this abysmal, desolate space yeah. that I hate operating in. Like there. So for anybody that doesn't know, I work for another company outside of doing my own stuff. And one of the constant problems we run into is cables and we get blamed for it all the time mm. but it's because cables aren't living up to the specification that they say they're delivering right they're not and it's a huge pain in the butt mm -hmm. and people are running into that and they don't know they're running into it because there's not an easy way to test that so it's a mess it is yeah. an absolute mess and there's a lot of things that um should be in the spec that aren't in the spec and it's just a a disaster yeah, 2.1 is real you need yeah. it for 4k 120 um but it or 8k a disaster. Yeah, yeah it's a mess yeah it's not well and really when you think about hdmi in general it's always been a mess yeah it it's, has it's a, it's a hot mess um and it's i don't know if it's because there's just not a set standard or everybody's not holding to the same standards i don't know what the issue there's is, a standard but... it's just there's no Policing no regulation, maybe? no regulation or what, making sure that people pass spec or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just like there was a, a Linus Tech Tips video mm -hmm. where they tested all these cables with legit cable tester. And a lot of the ones that they tested, yeah. even from reputable companies <clears throat> that were supposed to be patent, getting a certain spec, weren't doing it. Yeah. So it's it's just a mess. It, yeah. It's really painful for the average consumer to have to deal with. Especially yeah, when you're trying to use technologies that are on the bleeding edge that need that bandwidth. Sure. Martin even says they just changed the spec for HDMI 2.1 to the point to where it's nearly pointless for cables. The 2.1A? Yeah, it's there's some cool stuff in there, yeah. like shortening handshake times and some other things, but it's... I like that. It's great. That's a, that's a benefit if but it works. <laughs> if, if they can just say they do it and they don't do it, what's the point? Yeah. 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 It's so again, I think it comes back to regulation. So for sure, man. Good question. All right. This is for you. Randy says, Ryan, when you mentioned AMP DAC, so talking about M-Wave, are you referring to AMP and auto calibration like last year? So the AMPs in the room correction room last year were just there so that we could use processors. When I say AMP and DAC, I mean like AMPs, like Parasound or... Buckeye or any of that stuff. And then DAX, I'm talking about standalone DAX or mm -hmm. the DAX in like a Denon or Marantz or a Yamaha or my X Saber Pro that's sitting over here and being able to put those behind a curtain. And can you tell the difference? Can you right? hear a difference between a DAC? Can you hear it. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the difference in an amp? Can 
can that take place? And I know mm -hmm. how to do it and make sure that you're not having to unplug and plug things back in. So it's going to be a legit. Yeah. And it's got to be quick. Yeah. It, you know, it, we will be instant. You so, know, we, anytime that, that you have to good. unhook and yep. switch cables, you're introducing that, subjectivity. Yep. And that is not what this is about. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. What was this one real quick? Oh, it hadn't popped up. It's weird because I've got the live chat in a pop out, but then in StreamYard, it takes a, it's kind of a little delayed before mm -hmm. I can get access to it. What does he say? Chris says, uh, I'll send you. Oh, okay. So I'm bad. It, it starred my name. So I thought he was asking something for me. Joe says, I have a Marantz 6015 and have ordered new clips, 8,000 F towers. Do you think I'll need an external amp to power them? Um, so a couple things I always ask people, how many speakers are you driving? The 8,000 Fs are very efficient. So I don't think you're going to have an issue, even if you max out that 6015. Um, I'm thinking the 6015, is that a 9.2 channel AVR? I think it's 80 watts a channel at two channels driven. Yeah, the 8015 that I reviewed and owned um, for a couple of years, that was an 11.2. So I think yours is a, a 9.2. So if you had nine speakers hooked up to it, uh, if they're all clips in that same series, the 8000 series, you know, you should be really fine with that. Um, and again, the other thing too, are you running subwoofer? a subwoofer or multiple subwoofers and crossing over your speakers. We talked about this, I think in the last podcast, if you're crossing your speakers over, let's say at 80 Hertz, 70 Hertz, you're offloading those lower frequencies to the mm -hmm. subwoofer. So it makes it a lot easier to drive towers, center channel surrounds Atmos speakers when they're not having to play full range. If you were to say, Hey, Michael, I'm doing a, a Marantz 6015. I've got, this clip system and I'm running them all full range. Okay. I could definitely see where you might want to add an external amp, at least to the front three to alleviate some of that power, but I think you're going to be fine. And what I always recommend people try out your system, enjoy it with just the AVR, crank it up, you know, go up to reference, listen to a movie, listen to music and just listen for certain things like, okay, does it sound strained? Does it sound distorted? Do your ears hurt? Yeah. I mean, if it if it sounds clean and, and everything's good, more than likely you're not going to hear a massive difference. Um, typically, when you've got inefficient speakers, you know, we're talking like 84 dB, 86 dB. It takes a lot of power to get them to reference level. So, um, so yeah, it's Eclipse. And everybody's going to say, you know, oh, Klipsch overrates their sensitivity. Well, that's probably true. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of people that are much smarter than I am that can measure that stuff and, and kind of verify that. But it's not astronomically, you know. I mean, maybe 3 dB, 6 dB. But it's still, I can tell you right now, I've reviewed two speakers side by side and I always have to turn up the AVR on a lot of the other speakers that I, that I review because they are less sensitive. And it takes twice the power to gain only three decibels in volume. And so, um, but I think you're going to be okay. But Joe, like I said, just try it, use it. Then if you feel like you need some more power, get you a three channel, five channel amplifier, or you can get one to replace the entire uh, AVR. And so uh, just fully I, power. I think it's going to depend on how loud you listen. If you push reference, maybe you're going to be right on the fringes. So I just kind of took a guesstimation here, and this is without room mm -hmm. coming into the equation or EQ coming into this equation because EQ can mm -hmm. really change how things work, especially if it's boosting frequencies. Mm -hmm. But I, I also used a main listening position of about three meters from your mm -hmm. speakers. And I lowered their sensitivity because that's typically what all of them do is they'll say they're, like clip says they're 98. They're probably not 98, but you're going to be pushing in order to get to reference mm -hmm. of 105. And this is without the room. So you're not getting any room gain and we're not including EQ. So this could be worse. Um, you're going to need to get to reference approximately 128 Watts per channel. So if you don't listen to reference, you're probably fine. 
But when you start trying to get into these high frequencies mm -hmm. or the higher SPLs, you can run into issues. Now, room gain is going to help out quite a bit um, where you're not probably going to need that much. But just if you're really trying to push that high, yeah. maybe. And it, like Michael said, if you can hear distortion, because typically with most amplifiers, unless you're in something like a Hypex or a Purify, like the Class H's or Class AB's that are in a lot of AVR's, you're going to start, when you start pushing that amplifier up into its higher um, output ranges, you're increasing distortion. Yeah. So just things to be aware of. The, this is a very broad question, and there's so yeah. many variables that come into it. It's really difficult to say whether you're going to need something or not. Mm -hmm. um, also, what Michael said is not using low frequencies. That's going to help. Yeah. But my recommendation is do some listening. If your ears get like a shrillness or they hurt, yeah. you're running into distortion. Absolutely. So do that test. See where you land. Um, also try and figure out what volume range you're typically listening at. And if you're in like the 80 dB or low 90s, then you're fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. It's, it's when you start trying to push into reference and stuff that you can potentially run into, into problems. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt. Just give it a shot. You know, play with it for a while. Just enjoy it. And you'll, I think you'll be able to tell whether or not you need an amplifier. I went into, I've owned clips a lot. I mean, I've owned probably over 50 pair of clip speakers over the years. Um, and that's a lot. It's kind of an, I had an obsession. I wanted to own every single clips um, just so that I could share my experience. Cause I started off with clips. I've always loved their brand and I didn't want to be sharing what I thought about a speaker unless I had actually heard that model. And so I was on a quest to, to own every single series that Klipsch ever made. And in that, you know, like I said, most of the time, an AVR was totally sufficient for, you know, that, that setup. And where it gets really, really difficult is when you're trying to power a bunch of speakers with a $500 receiver. You know, it just doesn't have a big power supply in it. But the Marantz SR6015 uh, should have a, a pretty decent sized power supply in it. So like I said, I think you'll be okay, but just try it out and you can always add an amplifier. Just don't really expect it to be complete night and day difference. Yeah. Adding an amplifier could help, but I just don't think it won't be night and day unless you're really pushing your AVR. Yep. If you're not, you're not going to notice anything. Well, um, you may notice if the gain structure on the amplifier is different and you're, it's going to boost the SPL. So this is something that mm -hmm. I want to make sure you're aware of mm -hmm. is that if you go from an AVR to a dedicated amplifier and the gain structure is different, what will happen is, is a lot of times the AVR or the amp is going to be louder. Mm -hmm. And we as humans perceive an right. increase in SPL is an increase in clarity. Yeah, but if you were like to level match the two, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. So just remember that this is why AB comparisons and SPL measurements and level matching and all that stuff are very important. So if you do that comparison, make sure you do your due diligence and it could potentially save your wallet. I like it. Michael, appreciate the $10 super chat. He says, I have a motorized elite screen paired with an LG HU 70 LAB projector. Looks really good to me. I want to add a 12 volt trigger to the projector. Any recommendations Thanks for the previous answer. So 12, I've never tried to do a 12 volt trigger with. Does it have a 12 volt? That's what I'm wondering. I think he's I'm saying at it. he's wanting to see if you can add a 12 volt trigger to it. Almost like a separate it. device. Uh, easiest way would be to buy a used Harmony Hub. Mm -hmm. That would be my suggestion because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. Ryan's talking about with the Harmony Hub, I have I had to buy an extender. Um, so it the comes new ones with like, come with them. Really? Well, they come uh, with a cable and a... Uh, yeah, but mine's 50 feet long. Oh. I had to go up through my attic and you know down. So I had to buy an extender. Not I everybody's think. looking for the length like you do, Michael. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> so I ended up running it through my attic down to the backside of the projector. So when I tell Harmony, hey, watch this movie... It kicks it on, and then when I'm done, hit power off. It sends another signal to it to turn it off. Um, I don't know if there's a, quote, 12-volt trigger. Usually 12-volt triggers mm -hmm. are going to be on, like, amplifiers and things like that so that when you turn your AVR on, it sends a small voltage 12-volt yeah. to it to say, hey, look, wake up. 
and then it wakes it up. And then when it's done, it sends another signal to it to tell it to power down. I wouldn't I want to put a 12 volt trigger on my projector anyway, because it needs the power down cycle and do all that. I wouldn't want to kill the power. That would be right. bad. Yeah. The 12 volt it's, I think it's purpose is for something different. I it's think great be for off. amplifiers, potentially AVRs and things mm -hmm. like that. But for anything that needs a cool down cycle, I wouldn't yeah. do it. And I would do something like a harmony, a harmony hub. Right. You just laughing at my face. No, I'm you laughing, laughing at, at me. No, I'm laughing at Richard, man. No, you're laughing at me. Richard is another t-shirt slogan. Man. You got your this, work cut this, out for you. It, no, this whole podcast is going to be demonetized. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Surprised they you haven't done it gonna, before. You guys are going to have a different view of, of youth man after after this one. I was like, man, I thought he was a nice guy. I use a Harmony Hub for that exact reason. It yeah. turns my projector on and I can do macros and stuff through Siri. Yep currently and so far it's still working good yeah it still works great software is really terrible but it, it works see i don't think so their soft hang on I'm gonna, i'll come back to you chris their software is terrible i think their software is phenomenal and the reason why i say that is usability i mean all right so let's back up pre harmony elite i had a harmony one i think it was called the one ultimate one Maybe it's just the one. I, I guess one. what I say is, is that it's not very polished. It just, it's very basic. It's very simple to utilize. That's great. It for is most users. Yes. For most home theater enthusiasts. Okay. I mean, yes. 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 But it's like, it looks like something out of the nineties and really? Yeah. On, on the phone. Dude, the phone. Okay. The phone app is like, that's gold to me. It, I don't know. Here, all right. So here, here's, here's what I used to have to do. I would go into the theater room and I would create an activity called, you know, um, watch movie. And I would tell it to do it. And then something, the timing would be off and I needed to add a delay. Well, I would have to take my remote from the theater room, come over to this office, log on to the computer, add the change, plug in a USB to the Harmony download it into the thing wait till it downloads and go back into the are you theater talking room. about just using your phone as the remote no i'm talking about using the phone to program the remote oh i yeah. think that's i mean gold. that's great i just think that i don't know it just and I'm like just, i said it, it just simplifies it to be able yes to for the delays. average user it's great i just want more granularity and it's not there yeah yeah and again, it's not. Perfect. I totally anyway. agree with you. I agree with you that yeah. it is. It's yeah. So when you said that they're, I'm like, man, I, I, I actually their computer hate. software is garbage. Yeah, it it does look like that's what I was ideas. specifically okay. talking about. Okay. The I'm phone talking integration about the phone, with the, phone, the remote is, is is. I wish it had some more functionality, but it works pretty well. No, you're correct because there are the, some things that you the can't PC do on the phone. thing is you're right. awful. You're right. That is, it's outdated, antiquated, but. I'm thinking maybe they knew they were going to shut down operations. So why are we going to improve? Yeah, it? probably. You know, which so they would have told when, us when, earlier. I <laughs> know. When they added functionality to the phone, I was like, "Wow, this is so great!" I mean, it just it takes all the guesswork out of it. It, it works. It's easy. Um, so I definitely like that. That is for sure. Don said, "I'm not done." Where'd you go? Here we go. Yeah, Don Ford says. Don Dunn says, "Youth man is the nicest person oh, he's ever on, met." Hold on, let's go back. I think to Mike. he said, "He said I was the nicest person on the planet." We, we got it. Said. We'll come back to that in a second. But Michael Gates says, "I want the trigger to tell the screen to go down." Oh, okay. The screen has the trigger. The projector doesn't. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've, you heard, I've heard people do doing that, that. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, you'd probably have to wire that into if your does your screen have a trigger. Because if it does, then that'd be totally then it's doable. Yeah, totally easy. All, all it's Stuck doing it into is the 12 volt. Yeah, because all it's doing that 12 volt is it's literally just a, a minor signal that's saying I'm either on or off. So when you turn your AVR on, it sends that little voltage to the device, whatever it's connected to, and it tells that device, hey, go ahead and turn on. And then when you turn it off, it sends another one to tell it to turn off. So mm -hmm. if if you're again, I've never owned a an electronic screen, a drop down motorized screen, if it does have a 12 volt, you're golden. If your question is, do they make a 12 volt trigger? That part, I don't know. And your how screen would have, to have the ability screen. to do it. Yeah. What you could do if it doesn't and it's remote controlled and you have a harmony, you can teach the harmony, the, the RF 
mm -hmm. codes for it or the oh, IR codes idea. for it. And then you yep. can run that into a macro and it'll do it for you. Yeah. That's the other way to do it. I like that. Yeah. Again, kind of going back to automation and, and the harmony. I think it'd be a good fit for you. There's other mm -hmm. ways to do it. Like Chris mm -hmm. says with an internet of things relay and there's other ways to do it. It's yeah. Just how hands-on do you want to be? Yeah, for sure. And if, if you need one, I think Bodie will sell you his. Says he hasn't used it in a couple of years. There you go. All right. Let's go back up here. Oh, right, he Chris, says the screen does have a 12. Sorry, I keep going back foot. It does I think have a 12 fine, volt. Um, so yep. on some AVRs, you can actually change what triggers get sent based on the activity that is activated. Mm -hmm. And you can change how they do things or what source is activated. So depending on what your AVR is, you could do it that mm -hmm. way. I it's wanted, like if you're watching TV and you yeah, have a TV there, I, it won't. The Harmony that. Hub may ha does the Harmony Hub have a trigger out? I think it does. I think it has one. Mm, honestly, I don't know. If that doesn't, you could just use a trigger controller or something to be able to do it. Um, if it has a trigger port, then there's tons of different ways to do it. Yeah. I was looking on the back. Yeah, that's something different. That's the Harmony extender. It's going to be hard to find stuff because it's it's used. Discontinued. I think it does. I think it's got a trigger port. And then you can tell it to activate it based on a macro. Yeah. I'd and then you can even split it. You can use trigger splitters and send it to multiple devices and all kinds of stuff. There's cool stuff that you can do. Triggers right. are great. I wish more things you had them. Chris, to your question... Have any of you reviewed AVS Prime Pinnacles floor standing speakers? So I haven't reviewed them. I actually just had a chance to hear those at the Florida Audio Expo this past weekend. Is this um, SVS? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So these are their entry level. So then they've got above that would be their Ultra series. And so a lot of the Ultra, um, I mean, you're going to get more SPL, higher SPL, nicer finish. But the Primes sound great. Um, I think they offer a huge value. Huge bang for your buck. Um, in the chat, we have Don. So Don actually was there as well. He had a chance to demo their room and several other guys here in Florida. So, um, but I haven't personally reviewed them. I, I haven't gotten any in. Ryan, have you ever heard them? Nope. Nope. John says, Ryan, uh, you've had a huge impact on my wallet and my mortgage. <laughs> Glad I could be supportive. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm glad I'm least, not the only one that gets blamed for you uh, guys. No, I get money. blamed all the time. And That's at awesome. least I live by what I say. I mean, I, yeah. I, uh, I buy too much stuff. Yeah. It's and if you guys need anything for your, I'll just throw this up there. If you need anything, hit Ryan up. So he'll be glad. I try to, to get take, you money. taken care of so we can have less impact on your wallet and yeah. potentially your mortgage. For and sure. hopefully, if you're married, keep you married. Right? That's, that's <laughs> and in all fairness, part. there's a lot of times Ryan says, you don't need it. You know? I did that if last he, night. If Somebody came to me and talked to me about um, processors, and I said, no. yeah, don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Do something if, else. If he, He's not just looking just to try to make a sale. I mean, if it's if it's going to benefit you, he'll tell you the benefits of it, and he'll give you you know his estimation and his assessment, and, and you make the decision on whether or not it's a good fit. But if it's not a good fit, he's not just going to sell you. I've talked many people down from the ledge where, yeah, it, yeah there was potential yeah. to sell something. I'm like, eh, don't do it. Yeah, it's not worth it. I got your best best interest at heart because I'm a I'm in this hobby and I'm an enthusiast too. So I know, I know what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> Chris, I gotta stop drinking, man, because you guys are gonna make me laugh and spew it everywhere. Chris says too late. All right, sorry. It's all good. High Modulus says, does an OmniMic software completely replace the Rue suite? Uh, potentially. So one shortcoming that OmniMic has is it's not as granular. It doesn't, it applies the level of smoothing that REW mm -hmm. doesn't. So you can't mm -hmm. get the granularity that REW <laughs> is going to give you in the measurements. Mm -hmm. That's one point where I do like REW, but for virtually everything else, OmniMic. Mm-hmm. Reginald, good to see you. He says, why are those speakers up against a brick wall with those two windows? I think he's They're referring to your picture. So that's just, just a picture. He's on a green screen. Where'd you get that? Just Google search? Yep. So yeah. let me... Is that from their website? There you maybe? go. 
I don't know, stereo net or something. Oh, okay. So, so it may not even be a real. Like, there's a green screen setup. Um, let me see if I can get you guys to be able to see it. There you go. <laughs> Just a green screen. Turn that back on. Glass nobody Medic. nobody wants to look in the bathroom that's behind that. <laughs> Glass Medic says, "Youth man is at Youth man is your dislike for the MR1." So it's talking about Emotiva that we had a conversation with couple weeks back um is it that bad that you didn't read my request i asked if you could review it um so right now the biggest thing is i am inundated with product inundated so have, is an understatement i have way more product than i can review right now so i need to get through those things before i take on additional items um do I want to review? <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm not. A, all right. So here. Just here's don't the, answer the question. <laughs> no, I'm going to answer the question. So the challenge for me, it's it's interesting because a lot of times people will say, I never hear you say anything bad about a product. It's not that I, I don't have anything negative to say. I try to be really choosy and picky on what I review. And so I really enjoy reviewing things that I truly think are going to be awesome products. The last thing I want to do is spend my time, energy, filming, editing, reviewing, listening, just to get something that is potentially really buggy or doesn't sound good or doesn't look good. And so I turn down way more things than I review. I get emails every single day from companies. They're like, hey, we'd love to send you this and we want you to review this. And and if I don't, I mean, I've been sent some really weird stuff. And it's like, if I don't, if I'm not going to get excited about it in the email and the pictures they send me, then more than likely, I'm not going to get excited on the video. And so why would I want to waste my time and energy on that? Um, is it out of the question? No. Um, I'm just saying my initial impressions of the MR1, I'm just not super excited. Um, and with their track record on their processors, that I'll be honest, it just hasn't been great over the years. That is not where they excel. They make great amplifiers, great budget-friendly amplifiers. Um, their basic series allows people to get into separates, you know, a lot more affordable. But again, I, I just I don't know that I'm. I definitely, I'm still not super excited about it. So it'd be, it'd be hard for me to go, Hey, Mativa, can you send me something I'm not really excited about just to see if you can prove me wrong kind of thing. So I don't know. It, it may happen. Um, but might not be honest with you, at least, especially now, right now I've got to get, I've got so much stuff, man. Um, man, I've got mad VR videos to make for you guys. It's like, there's just so many things on the list. So, but yeah. Reginald got another question. Ryan, why Same is your question. setup? It's oh, okay. Speaker okay. Wall thing. He would just want to make sure we got to it. Jay Cameron, that subwoofer in the opposite quarter corners were in theory the better setup, but in my opinion, the setup for me sounded way better than the two with the two up front subs up front. It's dependent on the room. That won't always be the case, but it just depends. Mm -hmm. It's very room driven, sub driven. There's a lot of variables that go into that. So in your case, it mm -hmm. may have worked better with them both up in the front left corners. In somebody else's case, it may have worked better with them both in the back. I mean, mm -hmm. it just depends. Martin says, any opinion on the room calibration on the new Sony ES receivers? So I, I haven't, used haven't used it, so it'd be hard for me to, to say anything about it. Um, again, this is one of those brands that I don't know. I would get excited and, and ask them to send me one. They've gotten good reviews. The new ones. I, that have I hear out. that, but I, again, I'm just going from past experience. Sony has never led the way in receivers. Their ES series back in the day was, was decent, but it still wasn't like a, in no, the forefront. It was okay. That's already so over. again, that would just be another thing that I probably wouldn't be super, super excited about. Um, but I'm, it's I'm got potential. That's the thing. I'm hoping that they do well. I mean, I don't think I want any brand to not do well. I'd love to see. I mean, the more the more brands and the more companies and the more products that you guys have the opportunity 
um, to buy, that's a good thing because it causes competition between the other ones to make better products. So anytime you've got another, I mean, when is the last time you've seen a $3,000, $3,500 Sony AVR? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Now they're trying to, to push up against the Denons, the Marantzes, the Pioneers. I'll get a Sony um, for the room correction for this year so we so can I'm, hear what it's doing. I'm curious. So, but yeah. So hopefully we'll put we'll it to the test at M-Wave. Supernova Moore says, do you think Marantz will make the 7706 replacement this year? Good question. I don't know how often Marantz updates their AVRs. They just came out with a new series. So I'm thinking they're not going to replace the 7706 because they've got the brand new series. Um, but I don't know. And most of the time, these brands and manufacturers, they definitely keep things really close to the chest. So they don't let you know what they're working on. They're not going to tell you. I think hints. it'll be there because they've got spacing after the Cinema 40, mm -hmm. right? They've got a 30, and one, a gap. 30 and 20 and there's some space. So I think there's going to be another processor. Maybe but like it may not, but it may not be the 70, like it may not be a 7707. It may no, be I think like the AV10 is replacing the 8805. And I mm -hmm. think it's like an AV20 may replace the 7706 okay. or something. Yeah. That be makes more guess. sense to me. Yep. So again, most of these come out with new AVRs at least every year to every two years. So uh, definitely very possible. Do you think Yamaha, will, again, we're just guessing. Do you think Yamaha will make another processor? I'm not familiar with Yamaha. Um, I've only Maybe. owned one. So It's hard to compete with the big boys. And yeah. Denon and Marantz have a pretty heavy grip on everything right now. Mm -hmm. so it's it can be tough and got, michael and i are just speaking from speculation here yeah. neither him nor i know anything about yeah. like the 7706 whether yamaha will do anything yeah neither of us have any experience with any of the new sony stuff mm -hmm. um so just this is all hearsay yeah. at this point 100 nicholas says upgraded from dual pb 2000 to dual pb 4000 and i got no difference in performance interesting I think my room is too small for dual PB K subs. So again, Nicholas, kind of what we talked about earlier. My first question is, have you measured the subwoofers? Um, what does the frequency response look like in your room? Are they in the same exact location as the other ones? Uh, if you move those subwoofers, they're going to interact with your room differently. So you could put two better subwoofers in your room and get worse, worse uh, performance than two lower end subwoofers. Um, but yeah, I mean, the PB4 is an older sub, I believe. So I, some of the models I'm not familiar with on like when they came out. Like, well, your, your older. thing here is just going to be really the main comparison is going to be driver size, right? And surface area between the 2000 and the 4000. I mean, you would think that the 4000 would outperform. So that's why I would, I was asking about, have you measured it? Are yeah. they in, in location? That would be my mm -hmm. guess. You mm -hmm. may be, think that they're the same performance, but maybe they're in a knoll. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in a knoll. Yeah. So again, and you won't know that unless you actually measure it. So that would be my recommendation for you. Will says, will Focal or Polk have demonstration rooms at M-Wave this year? So I've had some conversation with Sound United. Um, they're still trying to figure out. I don't think they're going to be um, demoing stuff. They are thinking about uh, possibly being a sponsor of the event, but I don't think they're physically going to be there. So Polk, pro at least at this point, I don't see Polk coming because that's part of them. Focal, I haven't heard. Well, no, maybe I did hear from. I'm going to have conversations heard. about Focal on Wednesday. Okay. So, so my gonna... contact, I've reached out to them, and and you know they didn't express any interest in. Doing hopefully, that. I don't know if they'll have their own room, but it's hopeful. Okay. I did get to, to see some of their uh, headphones at the Florida mm. Audio Expo. They're beautiful, man. Gosh, they are. So... One of them, I listened to the Celestes, and they had no bass. I don't know what happened there, but I didn't care for those at all. Um, but then I heard the Stellias. I'm like, man, these things rock. Oh, yeah, they're 1800 bucks. Like, yeah, they better rock. So, but yeah, it'd be cool to have. Man, I'm, I'd love to see as many brands come to M-Wave as possible to give you guys experience with their brands and what they can offer. 
Nicholas says, can a small room reduce the tactile performance of a large sub? If you put the same size sub in a bigger room, do you get higher tactile performance from it? Great question, man. No. So if you put a sub in a bigger room, is it going to perform better because it has more room to, quote, breathe? I think it's going to it'll be harder because it's about surface area and trying to pressurize that room. To get that tactile feel, the sub has to be able to pressurize the room. And if it can't, you're not going to feel it. So bigger rooms are going to be harder for a sub to be able to deal with. The smaller the room and the cubic feet, the easier time the sub's going to have. Mm -hmm. And the closer you can put the sub to you, the better you're going to be. Like a near field is a good way to be able to offset this in a large room. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, smaller rooms should be better for a sub because it has less area that needs to be pressurized. Yeah. So Will says, thanks for answering my question. And he also says, see you both at M-Wave. Man, we're excited yeah. that you're going to be there. So if you guys are just joining or um, kind of missed the conversation earlier, we've got M-Wave dates. We have them right. Here we go. July the 14th through the 16th. This will be in Kansas City, in downtown Kansas City at Kansas City Convention Center. And you can get all the details on the website, MidwestAVExperience.com. We'd love to have you join us. It's going to be awesome. It will be awesome. Carlos says, what's that? Mm. Are you going to say something? Okay. Nope. Carlos says, this is so awesome. A uh, couple of dads just hanging out, speaking speakers. Love it. That's right, man. Super cool, man. We enjoy it. We enjoy hanging out with you guys. Men never grow questions. up. We just get more expensive toys. Bigger toys, more expensive toys for sure. Tiki time. I'm looking at the Buckeye Purify. 400A amplifier three channel. The only specs on their website show it only weighs six pounds. Is that a typo? Nope. Class D amplifiers. Yep. Very light, very efficient. They're digital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the 1ET 7040Ss and they're super <clears throat> light. They're mm -hmm. you're not buying a class A, class A B, class mm -hmm. B, class H. They're they're really small. They the run first, very efficiently. The first time I, I reviewed a Class D amplifier, I think it was the um, the Cherry amplifiers. And, and sadly, um, mm -hmm. Tommy passed away a while back. He was the owner of Cherry Amps. But he sends me this little, I mean, it's like three inches by three inches by one and a half inches tall. I'm thinking, like, really, what is this thing going to do? Dude, it rocked the crap out of my, my main towers, my clip speakers that have two tens in them. And so that was my first kind of eye opener that, man, you can pack a lot of power in something that's super light. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the benefits of class D is they're very efficient. They're not big, you know, long gone are the days of having the hundred pound amplifier for two channel, you know, they're just super, super light. So yep. Chuck says, I want to get a 13 channel speaker set up with at least two subs. What are your thoughts on the Emotiva? MR1 versus Anthem MRX 1148K. I'm not a gamer, but do stream Amazon Music sometime. Hmm. So again, my experience, um, Anthem tends to have a better um, reliability uh, than... <laughs> I, I'm just... Again, <laughs> I can just only share... I've owned... Actually, I, I bought a way back in the day, one of their processors, it had bugs. Um, I reviewed the RMC one. It had tons of bugs. So that's just my hesitancy. I mean, I love Emotiva as a company, but I just, I, I like their amplifiers, but it's hard for me to go, yeah, man, go get you an Emo, Emotiva processor. Um, I would love for them to either do better or, that, does that sound mean if I say either do better or get out of the market? I think what ended up happening is that Emotiva got into a position where they were trying to diversify too much. Mm -hmm. They originally were amplifiers and then speakers, and then they got into processors. Mm -hmm. And I think too many companies go down this line of trying to get their hands into too many different markets, yeah. and it ends up working negatively um, against them. And I think that's what ended up happening. I think they do very well for speakers using the AMT and their amplifiers. And I they just tried to do something and build a processor up from the ground up and just hasn't worked in their favor yet. Maybe mm -hmm. it will in the future. 
mean, look at an example of um, No Man's Sky or what, whatever it is, mm -hmm. where it had a horrific launch and then eventually it got came together very, yeah. very well. Um, so that's that's possible. Yeah. But just stuff definitely, to think about. Definitely some love in the chat for Anthem. Um, I've got Paradigm the, Company. Yeah, I've got the AV70 in for review. So hopefully I'll have a, a, a review on that pretty uh, who soon. Made, who made that comment? What's that? Who posted that um, question about MR1 against Anthem? That was Chuck. Chuck so Burgess. Chuck, I actually have, as another option, I have a Denon A1H that needs to find a home. So let me know. Send me an email. And let's see if we can work something out. A1H. That's the big boy. That's huh? the big boy. Yeah. That's more channels than the... Uh, 1140 is going to bring to the table and it's going to get Dirac if I'm not mistaken. So it's go big or go home, baby. Yeah, for sure. That's funny. Richard says Anthem was on fire at M wave. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean in a good way. That's hilarious. The, the, and I don't think it was Anthem's fault. The Neoliths yeah. smoked yeah. the Anthem. Yeah, we, but it's we hooked because it up to those big boys. And the Neoliths are beaters. very hard on speakers or on amplifiers, amplifiers. and it was uh, literally on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that is not a negative on Anthem. That's yeah. it's just uh, the Neoliths are very hard, and it, they weren't enough of an amplifier. It was not a good pairing. No, it was not. Oh goodness. Wait, what just happened? Oh, I need to uncheck that one. Cool. Jason says, I just started the hobby. Congratulations, man. That's what we're all for. We love having guys that are new to the hobby. No questions is a dumb question. He says, I have a Sony 7.1 Polk audio speakers. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Polk XT line. Thanks, guys. Love both of your channels. So um, I don't have a lot of experience with Polk. Uh, my first series or first home theater system was a Polk audio system way back in the day. I think it was the RT800s. Uh, but that was because I worked at Circuit City, was able to get those at literally, I think, 60% off. So really, really big youth man deal back then. So that was my first uh, into or intro into home theater as far as my own personal. But I haven't reviewed or heard that XT20 mm -hmm. or 35. So really can't give a lot of advice on that as far as how they sound. I did review the Polk Reserve series. Really was pleased with that. The reserves um, are really good. I was very pleased with that. Um, but I, again, I don't I don't know how they would compare to the XT20. Chris or CA Check, who's in the, who was in the chat, he left earlier, mm -hmm. I think has the Polk Reserves. Okay. And they sound really good. They're good speakers. I mean, Polk I makes so. good stuff. Yeah. They're typically known for their more entry-level stuff because they can be mm -hmm. had at amazing price points. Sure. I think it comes down to Jason. This is what I tell people when they always ask for others' opinions is does it work for you? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? And yeah. that's what it comes down to. If you like it, it doesn't matter rock, what anybody rock else rock thinks. Yeah. So just use it. If it ticks all the boxes and does everything you want it to do, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what anybody else thinks. For sure. Bodhi says, so Ryan, could I email you about Margin, Martin Logan bookshelves? No. Yes, absolutely. Hit him up. Ryan at ascendav.net. I was kidding about the no. Yeah, you, you can email me. Adam says, what do you guys think of Integra amplifiers? I have no... Are you talking about the AVR? I don't think no, they I think make Integra an, has an amplifier. Do they make amplifiers? So. Okay. An amplifier is an amplifier. As long as it's well made, it shouldn't matter. A good amplifier to me is one that does not impact the sound at all. What goes in is what comes out, right? That's important. Mm -hmm. Far too often, people go down these lines of, well, this amplifier sounds different than this one. In some cases, they're right because the amplifier is actually mm -hmm. doing something to the sound but yeah. when it's sent out to the speaker. So as long as the Integra is impartial or i guess invisible in the signal chain and it's doing what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. it's probably great i don't know that i would spend that kind of money on an integra amplifier mm -hmm. though when you could probably find more for less unless you're buying it used just my personal personal opinion 
Brian says regarding Lumigen, at what point do you think a video processor is needed or required? That's a good question. Mm. It depends. That's a very budget focused question because a video processor is never needed or required. Um, it's at least not in today's day and age. I think it's always beneficial, but it's not required. Mm -hmm. um, you can be perfectly happy with something like, and I'm, this is not to discount the company because I think they make phenomenal projectors, like a Epson 5040, because mm -hmm. the Epson 5040 has static tone mapping, produces a great image for what it is. I mean, you can have a used one for a thousand bucks or something like yeah. that. It's great. Um, but you put a video processor on there, like a Mad VR, the thing's going to be amazing. I mean, look at what we saw at M Wave with the LS4000 yeah. come up against the NZ8. It wasn't even yeah. a fair it, fight. It, it was kind of weird. It was like, really? So Tone mapping makes that much of a difference, yeah, and it did. It, well. was, it wasn't even close. So it can, but it's a very much a luxury. Yeah. So it can have some major implications because you can do things like custom zoom and make yeah. a 16 by 9 image fill a 235 screen. You can do auto or constant fit aspect ratio management where you're not having to do lens shift anymore. Um, AI based motion interpolation. I mean, there's mm -hmm. tons of stuff that can get added into this that can be huge extras in your yeah. experience and immersion level, but it's very much a do you have discretionary income to be able to spend on it? Yeah. Because they're not cheap typically. No, no. And there's a couple of different processors out there on the market. So, but they're, they all do something a little bit different. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, I think it's, it's that cherry on the top, you know? I mean, it, it just makes it so much sweeter. Once you um, see it, you can't unsee it, but it again comes down to what you want to spend the money on it. Correct. I get it. Randy, at M-Wave, would there be an auto calibration comparison this year? I know you mentioned there might be improvements that you could make. Yeah, there will be, for sure. It's happening. So, it's in the plans. Popcorn, thoughts on the JBL Synthesis speakers demos? I've heard one, I think I've have, I've done one JBL Synthesis home theater tour. Very nice setup. Um, that was in kind of southwest, for, southeast Florida. Um, really not too long ago. Great sounding system. I think JBL Synthesis makes some really great products. Uh, I did hear them also at a uh, trade show. Audio Advice Live, they had a, a JBL synthesis system there that was pretty rocking. Um, I mean, I got nothing against them, that's for sure. Was it Chuck that posted the question about the Anthem against the MR1? Mm -hmm. Chuck, you should email me anyway. I'll just say that. Okay. Chuck, hit him up. Yeah, he's, I think he mentioned to, yeah, he says the A1H is out of his price range. You should email me anyway. I bet hook a brother up. <laughs> you might get a youth man deal. I think is what he's saying. I'm not saying anything. Uh, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Heinick, I hope I pronounced that right. He says, "Hi, I have a 105 inch screen. Is it worth buying a new Epson HC3800 or a used RS400 uh, with MadVR HTPC? Same price of projectors." Uh, RS four hundred. We saw some of the older JVCs that you're. They were out. good. <laughs> Last January, yeah. Yeah. on a small enough screen, they are <laughs> damn good. Especially yeah. if they don't have Mad VR, they suck. Yeah, because their tone mapping is terrible. Yeah, but if you get you have Mad VR on a home theater PC, if you have that mm -hmm. JVC, because the mm -hmm. contrast is going to mop the floor with the Epson. And the screen is going to be small enough that the limited light capability of the JVC isn't going to matter. Mm -hmm. And the, the Mad VR is going to offset its tone mapping capability. So yeah. JVC, no question. If you want a super bright image, Epson's going to be able to help it. And I would mm -hmm. encourage you to try and go like Epson 5040 mm -hmm. um, instead of the HC3800. But The good, good thing with a 105-inch screen a lot of projectors can easily handle that. It's when you get to the mm -hmm. 120s, 130s, 150s that you're going to need a much brighter projector, and the mm -hmm. Epson can definitely help out with that. But I'm with you, man. I, I do like what JVC brings to the table. 
PK says, Youth Man, what's the main difference you found between JTR and PowerSound audio subs since you have reviewed both? So, um, yes, I have reviewed one PowerSound audio subwoofer. So that was the 36, I think it was the 3610. It was a dual opposing 18 inch uh, subwoofer. It's a beast. I'll be honest with you. It is a massive beast. Slam out the wazoo. Phenomenal subwoofer. I haven't reviewed any other of Tom's subwoofers. Uh, I know he makes big ones now. He makes them 21s and a bunch of different ones. So I can only speak for that one particular subwoofer. It was phenomenal. I've heard a ton of JTR systems, including my own probably, what, 15, maybe even 20 JTR systems. And every single one of them, I have been just blown away. Like, absolutely. So I think they're both great companies. They both bring something different. Um, I've just had more experience with JTR and hearing more JTR home theaters. So, but both of them dig really deep, a um, lot of output, and neither one look pretty. You know, I mean, they're nope. not meant for that. They're meant for um, performance. That's really what the goal is. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I can definitely recommend both of them, but I think I've just had way more experience with JTR and I've never heard a JTR system that I went, eh, I wish they had more bass. I mean, even Jeff's, I don't even want to call it entry level, but his most affordable subwoofer, which is the, I think the RS1, it's a single 18, like 2,500 watt amplifier in it. It's a beast absolute beast you know and it's sealed of course he's got ported one so anyway i think both of them offer great products but um, my hats kind of tip towards jtr just because i've i've re reviewed not really reviewed but experienced more home theaters that have jtr than power sound audio ryan any thoughts nope Gamma says, how to get rid of reduce, how to get rid of and reduce subwoofer resonance. Okay. So you're talking I'm assuming about he's talking about room resonance. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah, you'd have to add bracing to a subwoofer if you're getting resonance in the subwoofer. So are you, are you talking about like vibrating that kind of resonance? Like things that are vibrating in your room? Uh yeah. If if he is, then first thing is time alignment. Because maybe you've you've got boomy bass and things are up too high and they're not <clears throat> working very well. You've got peaks and you just got problems. The next thing is fixing your room, mm. um, screwing down drywall, putting in bass traps. Bass traps are hard, especially for lower frequencies because they have to be enormous. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, time alignment, EQ, and fixing the room. If it's not the sub itself, if it's the sub yeah. itself. That's resonating. You have to put some bracing in it or get a better sub. Yeah. Put it on isolation feet. If it's vibrating the floor, it shouldn't mm -hmm. be. A well-made sub shouldn't move. I mean, you yeah. should be able to put something on it and not move really at all. Yeah, a little bit. The cabinets are so heavy. Like the SVS sound path feet. So that might separate that from interacting with your room. If it's, you know, traveling through your, you know, like in my case, I've got a cabinet. So that definitely could help you. But don't that think aspect. that sound isolation feet are going to stop it from pissing off your neighbors if they're below you, because <laughs> it's sure. not. Yeah, it's going to travel through the walls for sure. Um, there was something else I was thinking of on that resonance. Oh, so one thing, if if you've got just some small vibrations, use like felt in between. Sometimes you can slide that like behind a picture frame or Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got a like, can lighting that are, are kind of vibrating, put some felt behind that in between that and the drywall. Another thing, good thing for can lighting is, uh, oh, or any type of lighting blue, is rock hole safe and sound oh, okay. because it's fire resistant. So it won't, it doesn't care mm -hmm. really about the heat. So you can just shove it up there and it'll be fine and it can yeah. isolate and stop things from moving around. I think somebody else mentioned that blue, what was that blue tack? Blue tack. Blue tack? Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. I think some people use that as Careful well. with that on your walls, though, because it can leave like a grease stain. Derek, back to your question. He says, how do you know when the room is pressurized? Oh, you'll feel it. When you feel it in your body, <laughs> bro. Yeah. If you if like if you feel your pants legs shaking, if you feel like your chest is kind of pushing you'll feel the in pressure a little bit. on your ears and stuff, you'll feel it. You're like, oh yeah. If you've never felt that, come mm -hmm. to M Wave and you will feel it. 
Yeah, we're gonna have some big subs at M Wave. We've already um, we've had multiple vendors make me ask the the, the location venue. if we there was a sound ordinance, and they said yeah. no. So yeah. we're basically they here. Here's the thing: they basically told us they said, "Look, we want to come. We really do. We want to be there. We want people to experience what we we bring to the the home theater environment and two channel." But we have to know for a fact that you're not going to tell us to turn or ask us to turn down our subwoofers. I'm like, I know me and Ryan won't, but the venue could. So we've asked the venue and we got it in writing. I think you asked them three times. You're like, hey, yeah. we just want to make sure you understand what we're bringing to your conference. And they like, said no. no. I think the biggest thing is we're kind of like off to the side. We're at the mm -hmm. end of this. We're the problem um, children. <laughs> Pushed off to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that's funny but yeah so pressurizing in the room is, is a good thing definitely man, you guys got some questions tonight. yeah man i love these man these are great so d ryan says will martin logan be at m wave yes so we've already talked to martin logan they're gonna be there they're coming um uh, we'd love to have their new motion series there so we're talking with them oh, about we're gonna that. bring it i'm gonna make them bring it so make them bring it you don't bring your own stuff I i'm gonna make them bring it they're like right around the corner too, man. It's so convenient. They, they got a ship from Buffalo, so that stuff isn't in isn't uh, in Lawrence. But that's true. Yeah. I didn't think about that. No, Lawrence is just their head. Not like that. Yeah, it's not like they got a big warehouse mm -hmm. in Lawrence. Nope. So Johnny E says, Ryan and Youth Man, I'm coming to M Wave this year. Looking forward to meeting you both. My question is, will you have a Sendo speakers and JTR at M Wave? Thanks for all that you both do. Appreciate you, Johnny. Excited to hang out with you at M Wave 2023 in kansas city um we are working with jtr i've talked to jeff and he says michael i'm 75 percent sure that we're coming and so he needs to kind of um and we've got tony in the chat sowk so maybe tony can hit him up this week and go hey jeff what's our plans are we coming we're we not I and mean, he asked um, about power so yeah yeah so he there's some just some logistics things he's got to figure out the cool thing if jeff decides he wants to come he said, Michael, I bought a, um, a truss system specifically to build an Atmos system, like a full on JTR Atmos experience. And I told Jeb that would be, I mean, I, I would love for you guys to experience a full JTR system. And so if he agrees to come and he brings that truss system, again, it's logistics. He's got to ship all that stuff here. Then he's got to get some help building that, putting it together. It takes a lot longer than setting up a 5.1 or 7.1, but but um, I, I'm pretty sure I think they'll come. I would love for Jeff to bring some JTR stuff so you guys can experience um, the love I have for JTR, man. They it's really, worth it. really make some great stuff. They're one of the in-game speakers. Yeah, I, I know for me. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have any. I, I don't need anything more. You know, I mean, unless, there isn't anything more. Yeah, I, I, you get to certain me personally levels from certain <clears throat> manufacturers, and yeah. there's no other place to go. Yeah, right. You're just changing for whatever reason. Right. And more JTR lateral. is one yeah. of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do everything for me. So. But yeah, as far as Ascendo, I have not heard anything from Ascendo. Ascendo is harder because they're they're overseas. Um, it's hard enough for a company to be out of state and bringing a full, you know, Atmos system or some subwoofers, and it's a big expense for them to do that. But Ascendo would be a little bit harder just because they're, like I said, mm -hmm. they're over overseas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not to say it's it's off the table. We'd love to have them there, man. I'd love for them to bring some some big boys subwoofers and their speakers. They've got a lot of speakers and stuff, so but not sure that they'll be there. Charlie says looking for a dedicated processor, minimum eleven channels with three thousand to four thousand budget. Any recommendations? So that would fall along the lines. Uh, again, what I've got the uh, Marantz SR eleven. I'm sorry, not SR. Marantz AV7706. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. fits in that budget still. It does. I don't know, I don't know their current pricing. No, um, it, it absolutely does. So, Charlie, yeah. I'm going to tell you to contact me, and we can we can go through some stuff. What else would there be? Um, there's a couple options. 
the HTP one is an option though. It's out of stock. Mm hmm. I'm always hesitant with the HTP one because there's been a lot of stuff going around with that. And there's been a lot of people that have had to go through some issues. I mm -hmm. understand that a lot of people love it, but that's mm -hmm. not something that I would want to deal with, with my, with a product of that mm -hmm. price point. I, yeah. I'm sure it's a great product. I, ne I never had rack. any, yeah, I never had any issues with it during I'm my, sure but I only had it a month. Um, I mean, it's direct, so it's awesome. But Sam, but, Sam um, says AVM 70 falls in that range. Anthem is another good option. But just shoot me an email or shoot me a text. Um, even if you don't buy from me, I'm happy to provide advice or any information mm -hmm. or anything like that. But we can go over a couple things. And I, I think it may be worthwhile for you. So every day, Jay, you're always welcome. Always to late. Going late. Man, you went a totally different direction than I went. I'm yeah. like saying, hey, man, welcome. You're like, you're always late. Don't come back again. Get here on time. <laughs> I love it, man. Appreciate you being kidding. here. We're having a good time. Hey, we've been going oh, for over yeah. two hours. Yeah, we're man. having a good time. <clears throat> All right. Charlie looking. Oh, sorry. You can tell I'm good. Dwayne says, have you listened to the new Martin Logan speakers? I have not. So that is something we talked about earlier in the show. I've got a set that's coming in. Ryan gets his in tomorrow. Tomorrow. So which I am. I got a bunch coming. Yeah. I bought seven center channels. Okay. Because I'm putting them on my ceiling. Nice. Because I'm tired of hitting my head on my yeah. bookshelves that are on my ceiling. That's going to be cool. So I got an upgrade, right? Because they're bigger, <laughs> which larger cabinet, bigger drivers, new tweeters. So <laughs> I get an upgrade. I can move. I'm going to have 31 channels in my theater. <laughs> 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 so those of you that were fortunate enough within the first 48 hours to get VIP gold and VIP platinum tickets, we do have uh, a few platinums left, Yeah, but you're going to get to experience Ryan's setup. It's, it's truly a, a phenomenal. It's, phenomenal I setup. call it the narcissistic theater It's pretty because hard. it is. I mean, it's the theater is designed around the premise of giving the absolute best experience to one seat yeah. and you can still have a good experience outside mm -hmm. of that seat, yeah. but it's an entirely electrostatic base layer. Mm -hmm. I'm getting front heights, rear heights, voice of God. So there's how many channels does that put on my ceiling? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have more channels on my ceiling than I am in my base <laughs> layer. Oh uh, my God. It'd be a good That's time. So wild. So wild. I got some work to do though. The only unfortunate part about <laughs> it is I have to drill into the cabinets. Yeah. So Martin Logan, I've sent them pictures and they wince every time they see it because I'm yeah. drilling into the cabinets of the speakers yeah. that aren't designed to go in the ceiling. But yeah. you got to make, make sacrifices. Jamaica Social says, hey, guys, my new Onkyo RZ50 does not have independent subwoofer outs. Will Dirac deal with my dual subs or should I calibrate them separate? Separate. If they're if they're not co-located, like if they're not in the same location, you have to do it separate. Otherwise, you're going to have problems because the subs going to interact with the room differently. They'll interact with each other differently when there are different spots. You need mm -hmm. ideally depending on the sub, some subs like SVS, Martin Logan subs mm -hmm. um, for listen stuff. You can do the calibration on the sub itself using arc or what is per listen using? They use their own. Um, the easiest thing, if you don't have that, though, is mini DSP. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What, I think it's their own proprietary. I think it is too. In their subs. Yeah, a lot of them in ARC. SVS is their own proprietary <clears throat> stuff, um, but they need to be independently calibrated for best results. Mm -hmm. Rick, uh, man, I can't even talk tonight. Rick says, I'm building my Atmos theater room and funds are low. I'll need to purchase a placeholder projector until I can afford a JVC NZ series. Any recommendations? Lots of good stuff out there. Epson 5040. It's been a go-to. It is. Still is. If you got a little bit more money, you could do like the 6050. Um, I don't know still, that it'd be worth it. But it's still a lot cheaper. Oh, yeah. In Z series. You're, so just depending on how long you're going to keep it for a while, it might be worthwhile, but it may yeah. not be. So you got that or do like a couple generations ago JVC, like the sure. RS 400, 420. Sure. Or 40, any of get those. A, you can get a used NX7, like what I've got. Um, you or an NX5. Yeah, true. 
Nick had his. He ended up getting the NZ and went back to. He went the, back. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I didn't see a massive difference. Yeah, so. but Nick's a penny pincher. Yeah, can't blame not, him. Not Rick, sure. when you're ready, when you're ready to go, <clears throat> let me know. We'll get you into that JVC. Get you yeah, taken care of. That's a weird comment. We're not posting that one. What? <laughs> what did you'd I say? To, no, no, no. You'd have to look on the live chat on. I don't know if it, it may not show it here. Oh, not oh, you. Well. I was like, yeah. what? What? I no, do? It pops up over here. It gives me the option, I guess, as a moderator to show or hide because it's on oh. my channel. I'm like, nah, you can keep that comment. It's just weird. All right. I'll screenshot. I'll show you off. All right. <laughs> just remind me. It's in my. All right. Randy. So how big is the storage unit for M wave and all these subs and speakers? You got to have outgrown Ryan. Last year was ridiculous. <laughs> last year we filled up a moving <clears throat> van with stuff. Big moving uh, man. This year it's going to be much more vendor dependent because mm -hmm. I can't, that was way too much last year. It had to happen last year because it was our first year. We had to take on a lot of this ourselves because we couldn't just go to the vendors and be like, ah, we need you to do this, this, and this. We had to do things on our own, which mm -hmm. it worked out. It worked out very well. Um, it was great, but hopefully I don't have to do that again. Mm -hmm. It took up an entire... <clears throat> so I have a three-car garage. <clears throat> it took up one full bay yeah. of stuff. Virtually floor-to-ceiling <laughs> of stuff. And it was plus stuff in my house. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot a yeah. lot a lot a lot it felt like i was moving yeah like my entire house and i was just at a show for a weekend and then had to come home and then put it all away somehow <laughs> but the volunteers helped I, I would still be putting that away if that wasn't wasn't going on yeah got some other guys that shared about some suggestions everyday jace's epson 880s only 500 bucks decent for what it is Something uh, to think about, though, is try and buy something that you're going to be able to get your money back out of yep. if you're going right. to sell it. And the 5040 sure. and those R JVC RS 420s and mm -hmm. everything in that price range, you will yeah. very easily be able to flip those. Yeah. Yeah. Sonian says uh, barely use NX7 for $4,500. So, again, it depends on what your budget I've seen is. Them go lower than that. Mm -hmm. So, find them youth man deals, man. Just be patient. Offer them cash. Offer them less than what they what they want to sell it for just see because a lot of guys are wanting to upgrade to the lasers so depends on how bad bad they want to move up but don't feel like too that you have to go to a laser you got to base it mm -hmm. on how much you actually watch yeah if you're only watching a couple hundred hours a year that's probably okay as long yeah. as you're not super sensitive to bulb fade i'm super yeah. sensitive i don't like it but if you can't see it after a couple hundred hours you're fine and that single bulb is going to last you Several, several years, years many years yeah and even then your bulb if replace you replace it for a couple hundred bucks recommend getting an oem bulb 100%. do not yep. in my opinion go find these third yep. party because i they're they never live yep. up to their expectation yep. but the oem bulbs like the mm -hmm. jvc the bulb chassis and stuff for five or six hundred bucks yeah. but they'll last you a thousand hours which if you're only watching a couple hundred hours a year it's five years yeah Oh, yeah. Ian, you're not like most people. What did he say? Ian just said a thousand plus hours a year. Yeah, you're not like most people. A thousand plus hours a year. I don't think I do that much. I don't even know where mine's at. I'd have to go back and look. I'm probably, I use it quite a bit, five to 750, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. But I use mine for work too, so yeah. I can't. All right, go back here. Rick says, I'm building an Atmos theater room and funds are low. I need to purchase a place. Oh, we already did that one. No. Yeah, we did, but he rewarded okay, he added, That's what it was. Definitely <laughs> under 5K. Yeah, I'm not going to change yeah, my answer. Yeah. I'm not changing use, my Use answer. market, absolutely. You can still get that. Yeah. Yep, I agree. All right, Ryan, are we providing earplugs for your tour? No. Bring your own, man. They're only cheap. Wien, only wieners bring ear protection. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bring ear I'm protection if you need it. 
Yeah, it doesn't hurt. I mean, bring them. I bought some on eBay. Tony recommended them to me. I'm sorry, not on eBay, on Amazon. And they're the kind that um, I, they don't just like clog up the sound because that's mm -hmm. to me that's pointless. But they let the high frequencies in. They reduce, you know, or no, I think it's the opposite. They reduce like 10 dB or something like that. So it makes it very safe. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's even more than 10 dB. All four of us, Grant, Sheldon, Jonathan, and myself, we all push bass pretty hard. I yeah. mean, I've got nine 18s in my room. Jonathan has eight. Grant has mm -hmm. two orbit shifters. Sheldon supposedly will have 16 18s. Mm -hmm. He needs to make that 18 18s just so it rolls off the tongue better. Yeah. need to convince him of that. But um, we all rock the bass pretty hard. So if you've got anything to go on with hearing sensitivity, yeah, we'd go spiritedly. It's we're not afraid to turn it up because we know our systems can handle it. So and that's what they're designed to do. And a lot yeah. of us will actually listen, especially to music at those volumes. It's not yeah, like for sure. We try and do things that are, you know, just showing what our systems can do. It's yeah. For the most part, we do push pretty hard. Yeah. I saw several new orders come in from M wave. So glad you guys are going to join us. Um, if it's amazing. You're, if you're new to the channel or new to um, what M wave is not that I always keep clicking. I need to delete that one. <laughs> I keep clicking on it thinking it's this one. So our dates for M wave, which stands for Midwest AV experience is July the 14th through the 16th. We did this event last year. It's super, super fun. We're going to have some really cool demonstrations there we're gonna have some great rooms working on some full dolby atmos systems that you'll get the experience from various vendors um, and then just do some seminars hanging out networking building relationships we're just gonna have a blast so you can check out all the details midwestavexperience.com we've sold out of all the vip and the vip gold still have a few vip platinums and a ton of uh pretty much our general is kind of not truly unlimited but we've got the space that we have this year, the venue isn't it's really way bigger. We don't yeah. have any issues with the numbers. Yeah. So we could I, have a ton of people there, but, but it's still going to be a small community kind of vendor. I mean, not vendor, but a event. And I, I do want to really anticipate this. Talk being. about the platinum stuff because mm -hmm. platinum could actually be, if you were thinking about the normal VIP gold, not the normal VIP, mm -hmm. but VIP gold, Mm -hmm. It could actually be a money saver for you because you don't have to worry about hotel. You don't yeah. have to worry about a rental car if that was a thing. Right. It's, I mean, you're stuck with us all weekend. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's something that you would enjoy. <laughs> um, so that's always an option. Yeah. It may seem yeah. like it's more expensive, but you got to look at the entire package of how yeah. much things are going for and how much you like Michael and I. Yeah. I guess is what it comes down to. So and Brian, possibly any of the other uh, <clears throat> content creators that are going to be be with us. Can you upgrade mm -hmm. from gold to platinum? Yes. Yeah. I can make that happen. Basically, what I have to do is just... He makes you pay him twice? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I basically just have to create a... In the shopping cart, I have to create a product that is the difference between platinum and gold or platinum and VIP, depending on which one you ordered. Uh, yeah, so he says gold. So I'd have to just create one of those and I can just send you an email. So if you're interested in doing that, what that means is as soon as he purchases that, if he chooses to do that, then I'll add another VIP gold back to the website. So there'll be one spot available. So definitely keep an eye out on on that. Um, so yeah. But yeah, we had, we had people last year. What I tried to do this year is... Um, not have to do that i don't mind doing that that's for sure but um but last year was so different because we had there was just a lot of that having to upgrade and i can't like throw that product out there just live to everybody because then it's mm -hmm. reduced by you know so it, oh, it just we'll taken care of yeah yeah that's no big deal so yeah he's taken shoot, care of brian's one of my patrons so feel free to reach out to me on patreon ryan like brian and i can get you a uh, a link to that so all right. DT says, what receiver are you using to run 31 channels? Storm. So, so I bought Storm consumer. as a normal consumer before I was a dealer. And I would do it again. Like that's how much I, 
I guess have eaten the or drank the storm Gatorade, drank the Kool-Aid. Drank the Kool-Aid. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. I just love the product. I'll never have to buy another chassis again. You got to yeah. buy in to the ecosystem, but I just get to upgrade from here on mm -hmm. out. So <clears throat> it's, it's fantastic, but I'm at the limit. So it's yeah. 31 channels. Um, I'm running, I'll have 24 like theater channels and then mm -hmm. seven independently controlled subs. Yeah. That's wild, man. It's a lot, but I designed the room that way so that upgrading could be easy. I'd be like, oh, over the years, I'll want to upgrade in two years. Yeah. I'm filling all my channels. Yeah. But I guess I did it with the mindset that I wasn't going to be a dealer, and I'm a dealer. So it's my showroom. And it, yeah, I love it. No complaints. Customer service, amazing. So John says, hey, chat room is, or which is better, Hypex uh, 502 MP amplifier or the Outlaw 2200 monoblock? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they both do decently well. But the Hypex NC502 is very, very well regarded, even on Audio Science Review. It gets, it got an amazing score. If I remember correctly, it's Class D. I don't think the 2200 is. So the Class D is going to run much cooler, mm -hmm. much more efficiently. And I've gone Class <clears throat> D and I won't go back. They're so much easier to deal with. I, and I, I'm walking the walk here. I have two eight channel NC502 MP chassis that, no, I have three. Sorry. I have three. <laughs> I have that's three. bad when you forget how many amplifiers. <laughs> oh, I've just got a there. whole nother eight channel that's sitting down there. It's not, oh the reason God. I forgot about it is because it's not running anything. Mm -hmm. The new stuff that's coming is going to be running on that. Yeah. Um, so, Hypex every day. And if you want the Buckeye, hit me up and we can get you going there is a little bit of a wait time it's a few weeks because dylan from buckeye actually builds them to order mm -hmm. um, it's used to be a lot longer it was a couple months because hypex this is one reason why i really like hypex they were not distributing their amplifiers because there was a problem in the manufacturing and they recognized it and they said no we're not sending these out um, so they waited and they got them yeah. fixed and they're fixed now and they're dylan's got them and they're getting put together so if you need something let me know and uh, we'll get you taken care of. It's a couple week wait time though. And I think Buckeye is going to be at M wave. Okay. Pretty sure. Cool. I got to reach out to him again. He was pretty confident about it last time we spoke. Nice. Dwayne says question. I spent 1300 to get my 5.2.2 calibrate to my room. Whoa. Calibrated. Whoa, is this normal? Okay, so I don't want to speak for normal because I don't know what normal is. Depends on um, the calibrator. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like anything else. I mean, you can have kind of, you know, I build websites. Can somebody charge $1,300 to build a website? Sure. Can somebody charge $13,000 to build a website? Mm -hmm. You know, so part of what you're spending is their level of expertise, mm -hmm. how long they've been in the business. Um, so I don't know what's normal. I know there are some guys that do it much cheaper, but, and, and it does, it's, it's a huge process. You know, it's going to be four hours, three hours, five hours. It, it's, That's it's not short, super, super, especially quick. if it's manual. Yeah. It's, it's not quick, you know, because they're relying on you to move the mic and do this and do that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what normal is. 1300 is a lot of money for a calibration. Um, but again, that's just from different people that, you know, that I've seen in the industry that, but these aren't like, I don't want to say they're not professionals. They're just for, for a professional. I don't think that, you know what I mean? Lot. For like one of the big names in the industry. I don't, that's what I'm you, saying. You wouldn't yeah. get them in the room for that. Anywhere yeah. close to that. I'm kind of thinking like, I mean, I don't know what the audio calibrators are, but like the Chris Deering's. You know, like Anthony Romani or Adam yeah. or something like, like that, that wouldn't happen. Like I know a guy, Chuck um, Gerlock. So he does a lot of the calibration for um, Wisdom Audios and Trinovs mm -hmm. and uh, Atlanta Home Theater. Mm -hmm. More than likely, that would not be out of his price range. You know what I'm saying? But Chuck has been doing this thing forever. You mean it would be out of his price range? Like it, he wouldn't come out there for that? That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. like that wouldn't be... It probably that or maybe even way more 
but just for the guy that's doing a little side hustle kind of thing. Yeah. And that Dwayne, this is not to say that you got a bad calibration. This 100%. is just what the industry represents. Yeah. Um, but it's like anything it down to. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get different. It depends on, again, their experience. You know, uh, my question is, did they do a good job? You know, are you if happy with if results? your rooms? If your room sounds phenomenal, you know, is that a good investment? 1300 bucks to have your system sounding the best that it's ever sounded. So again, is it worth it? That's everybody has to determine anything. Is it worth it, you know, for their setup? So he says, yes. There you go. Answers the question. Very cool, man. I'm glad it sounds awesome. So, but again, I, as far as I don't know too many people, I probably know three that do calibration remotely. So, Joan says, do you, <laughs> I love this one. Do you like rail subs? No mention. So we don't, I don't mention them a lot. Number one, cause I've, I've never reviewed any. I had requested a long time ago that they sent me one. I was going to review it and they were going to send me one until they found out I had clips speakers. My main speakers were La Scala's, which that leads me to my next comment. Um, the La Scala's are very sensitive. 104 dB sensitivity with one watt. Once they found out that I had that, they were like, um, our subs aren't going to work real well with your speakers. I don't know why, but that was coming from one of their lead guys at REL. Um, I've heard several systems that have had REL subs. I can't say that any of those were overly impressive to me, um, especially, if, and again, I'm a home theater guy. I don't do a lot of two channel listening. I do. They don't dig super deep typically. Um, I don't know. I just, there are a lot of other subwoofers that me personally, I would recommend. This but is that's gonna, just me. This is going to go back to my wet and dry comment from earlier. So we can okay. talk about getting moist yeah. again. Okay. All right. If you want to. I don't think the rails I've had rails. So mm -hmm. I had the two one two SEs, which was their big boys. That's a couple the big years ago. I've heard those. Yeah. Two twelves with a passive radiator. Mm -hmm. So it was three 12 inch drivers, one mm -hmm. being passive. And you guys have heard me tell this story before where I went over to Jonathan's. This is the first time I met Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And I walked into his room and he had eight eighteens and he turned something on and i just looked at him and went jonathan my subs don't do that mm. and that's that's kind of the difference right you're gonna get <clears throat> drive down to a certain frequency range and it's probably gonna sound okay and i think this is what a lot of people get into with the two channel they think they want this dry sound where they want that cha that chest thump to a point now the rel is not going to give you an output like something like a my 4,000 ULFs will at the chest thump. My 4,000s will eat those things for lunch at that volume or at that hurt frequency. Um, but that's what people, I think, have come to think is accurate. They want that dry feeling because they think it's more accurate and mm -hmm. they don't want that, what I'm going to call, quote unquote, wet mm -hmm. feeling, which is everything, the cohesiveness and the gel and everything that's down below, as Jonathan called it, the wobble that's right. down low. Um, because they think it doesn't sound good, but you're losing a tremendous amount of what's actually there. Um, and the rails are going to deliver that dry feeling, but you're not going to get anything that's below that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what I think. And they market this, um, plug it in directly to your LCR, your left and right. And you're yeah. getting the low frequency that your left and right is getting. And it's supposed to be more, accurate and something eh. no. yeah I, I i never understood that and i know they're they're trying to set themselves apart and be different but it, i don't know no. I, I don't buy into it it's you know they're trying to take the sound signature from your main speakers and no I I, i'm not sure I, I buy that logic and so again that's just me um a good yeah, sub probably, is a good sub and i listen to a, I use my system more for music and two channel and immersive music and all that than I do for movies. I mean, I'm a mm -hmm. huge music junkie and I, mm -hmm. I'll sit down there and work and just, it's amazing. Yeah. And I'm all JTR currently. And mm -hmm. there's nothing that I've ever heard that comes close. 
Yeah. The only other company that I can think of that will come close. And I think they're actually more less. Well, that'll come close is probably per listen with their subs. Um, maybe PSA, but I've never heard PSA. This is just from what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's not to talk down about any other manufacturers. A lot of other manufacturers don't have subs in that price range. I mean, yeah. we're talking about a considerably expensive subwoofer. Mm -hmm. So not talking down about any other manufacturers. It's just, I, there's not nothing even close. There's, I wouldn't trade them ever. Never, ever. Not for a rel. <laughs> Never. I mean, ever, ever. I mean, rels. If you can get them for a good price, I don't think they're bad subs. Right. I just yeah. don't think they're good subs either. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, like I said, and I don't ever want to spend talk bad about any company. I just, I personally, I, there are a lot of other brands that I just prefer over that. Oh yeah. Um, spend less and get get more. SVS, Rhythmic. Um, mm -hmm. Hell, Shoe. even Mar Martin Logan with their yeah. subs, what they've been doing. There's shoes got good. Shoes good. Mm -hmm. um, that same price range. And then the more expensive stuff, JTR, per mm -hmm. listen, PSA. Yeah. Just, there's so many other recommend other options that you could do that are mm -hmm. going to give you a better experience. Yeah. For sure. Jamaica says, "Youth man, whatever happened to your beloved Clips La Scala? So the Clips La Scala were what I mentioned earlier on in the show. I had those for seven years. They were forty years old. They looked forty years old. I mean, we're talking vintage looking, old school. Um, what happened was JTR offered to fly me up to hear their speakers. I had a conversation with Jeff." He had sent me their subwoofers, reviewed them, and I said, Jeff, these are bar none the most phenomenal subwoofers I've ever experienced. And I would just love to hear your speakers someday. And he said, Michael, you know we could make that happen, don't you? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I mean, I could put you on a flight. I'll fly you up here, and I can take you to a couple of cool home theaters. They're full JTRs. So I flew up there. I did a tour of their factory, which was super, super cool. I'd say factory headquarters. Um, that was really cool. There's a video on my channel about that. Then we went over to Tony, which he was in the chat earlier, SOWK. He's got a Smart. phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal JTR system. So that blew me away. Then we went over to Scott Newby's house. Scott has a ridiculous JTR system. Um, and then we went to Jeff's home and he had two of the RT 215s. So the big towers in a two channel setup. And so I walked away going, holy cow. And so that's what happened. My LCRs don't do that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I love the scholars. I really did. But I'm telling you, man, clips just, I mean, um, not clips, but JTR has just taken this whole home theater and music to an experience mm -hmm. that I haven't gotten in my theater room. And for some reason, I don't know why the scholars are known for great sounding musically, but I never felt in my room that they sounded great for music. I really did not uh, I don't know if it's because of their dispersion pattern. Maybe there was some reflections because they're inside a cabinet in my, like behind my screen and I need to add some acoustic treatment there, but um, they just weren't, you know, that was one area that they liked. They sounded great for home theater. They definitely didn't dig very deep at all. I think they were only effective down to about 70 hertz, which is kind of unusual for some speakers. Mm. Yeah, so they were way on up there. I know on their website it says lower, but when I started... Everybody's looking, website says lower. When I started looking at, like, I think even some of their own documents from way 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 back in the day when paul w clips had uh you know they had manufactured the original los Scalas, which is what i had i found some stuff and it was like yeah they're not they only go down to about 70 hertz and i was like okay so i think the um the 212 htrs go down to about 35 hertz so just much more conducive to my space yeah. plus they look awesome dude i got five identically height speakers they are all the same size so, um, working towards getting the rest of it outfitted with JTR. So, 
clarify so, before we move on yeah about the subs seaton also makes great subs yes 100 percent. do it yourself sound um the yeah, sound, sound group. group yep but gsg stereo integrity stereo integrity yeah. all lot, fantastic great brands out there so we just didn't go down that route because <laughs> a lot of them are do it yourself and yeah it's just slip yep. the mind sometimes yep. gsg's no, doing big things they got new yeah. things coming yeah and now they're are they, doing are they bringing them to in wave uh Not as sure. of right now possibly so they might be showing some cool stuff that yes because i've already talked to him as well yeah he was telling me this gosh it was sometime last year he's like hey we're working on this oh there's so, i've seen cool. pictures yeah i haven't seen it's yet. nice oh my god yeah. i mean there is some talk about trying to hit the industry where it hasn't gone before but it's yeah wow there's yeah. some stuff that may be coming that's very exciting Super cool. Johnny E says, Ryan or youth man, M wave tickets, the $75. Is that for all three days? That's per yes, hour. <laughs> that's <hilarious. laughs> no, that's for the whole event. And so, you know, we don't, we don't try to separate in it. It just gets to be a nightmare, honestly, trying to track that and figure out who can be here on Saturday, who can be on here on Friday, who can be on Sunday. We just give you the whole thing for the whole day or whole three days for the weekend. The only thing that, the general admission tickets don't give you access to is, are the extra stuff. So we've got a, um, a speaker this shootout that we're doing Saturday specifically. Night. No, it's not a shootout speaker, whatever he's doing. Comparisons. Um, that'll be on Saturday night for VIPs. Yes. VIP VIPs. gold and VIP platinum. platinum. Um, and it doesn't give access to the home theater tours that we'll be doing on Friday, Thursday. You're right. It is Thursday. Yeah. I'm getting my days mixed up. So hopefully I'll have that all on the website. Well, actually, I guess we had that on the tickets. We just don't yeah. have a schedule. So, yeah. So, but yeah, it gives you access to all three days. And so we'd love to have you join us. If you guys are just popping in the chat, we've got all the information for M wave over on the website, July 14th through the 16th. A lot of you guys, even during the, during the live stream tonight in the podcast, you've been buying tickets. So appreciate that. Super excited to have you guys out. We're going to hang out and have a blast. MidwestAVExperience.com for all the details. Nicholas says, if I was to upgrade my dual PV 4,000 subs, what should you swap them for? Part of that's going to be dependent on your budget. Another thing is I would ask, why do you want to upgrade? What do you feel that you're lacking with the PV 4000s? Because they're pretty, I mean, they're massive subwoofers. They've got great output. They um, won't dig to correct. ULF. That's correct. Frequencies. So are you looking for lower end extension? Because those will go down to probably like 17-ish hertz, roughly. And they may not have the output. Depends on what he's trying to do. I mean, they've yeah. got a lot of output, but... Mm -hmm. They yeah. I, they wouldn't fulfill my desires yeah. for low right. frequency. Sure. For bass. Depends so on what you want, as Michael said. Yeah. So if you're looking for something with lower extension, um, we mentioned a couple of those brands earlier. Power Sound Audio digs deep. JTR digs deep. Um, Seat and Submersive, those types of subwoofers, I think they dig pretty deep. Um, the DIY stuff. A lot of those will dig a lot. So there are a lot of brands that will go deeper than than the uh, SVS subs for sure. So my recommendations, Nicholas, are in no particular order, mm -hmm. depending on what you want. JTR, RTJ, right? Same, just depends on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Per listen or GSG. Mm -hmm. And if any of those three interest you, shoot me an email and we can see if we can help you out if the upgrade itch is really taking hold because mm. you will gain things by moving not that the pb 4000s are bad because mm -hmm. they're not yeah, sure it's just you've got room for improvement because those pb 4000s are going to fall off a cliff mm -hmm. as they come into 17 hertz and you're you're losing a decent amount and you're not going to be able to compete in output even at the higher frequencies with mm -hmm. the subs that i just mentioned yeah I think we got like yeah, two, maybe two one more. question. Yeah. Last two questions of the night. Oh, We're just right one. Work. Sony 
Sony N is in a question. He's just talking about Paul's. What are you talking about? It's not a question. Well, no, I just, but it tied oh, in with, that's okay. why I started. All right. It tied in with Paul's. That's why I did that. Well, Ian, you're with your full Martys, you're getting down to 17 because that's what the Martys are designed to do. They're a horn sub. They're not made to get stupid low. They're made for like chest level, ridiculous output. That's what those are designed to do. Mm -hmm. So for low frequency, you need yeah. a sub that's designed to do that. Like the yeah. JTR sealed, the JTR 4000s. Um, Perlistens can't get quite that low. They they just measure some of the best in the industry yeah. or like um, GSG's full cabinets or sealed mm -hmm. cabinets and stuff. They can get that low, but yeah. your subs aren't bad. They're just not designed yeah. for that specific yeah, purpose. They're designed for higher output. You're like... You know? moving in on orbit shifter orbit shifter is not designed to get that low it's like 20 25 hertz that joker was slam at the higher frequencies though oh man yeah 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 grant's got him so if you got yeah. those vip platinums that are left you can experience them he's got two of them oh, that's right yeah he's got two orbit shifters mm -hmm. you're right opposed <laughs> All these Kansas guys. City got, guys do it different. They do, man. It's awesome. And that's what we want to give you, those experiences, man. If you've never heard some of this stuff, man, it's a it's a treat. All right. Last couple thoughts here. A question and a and a comment. So Paul R says, Will JTR 210 HTs be a huge upgrade over my vintage clips chorus? Of course, the chorus, there's three models, I think, maybe even four. So I don't know if you've got the original chorus. There's a chorus two, I think there's a chorus three, and maybe even a chorus four. Um, so I'm thinking because he says vintage is probably either the chorus ones or maybe the chorus twos. So are they a huge upgrade? Um, I don't think I've heard the 210 HTs. So there's two different versions of speakers in Jeff's line. I guess the coaxial driver, the mid range, and the tweeter. So the ones that have the R in it stands for reference. And so like mine are the 212 HTR. So they have the higher end component. That one driver, back when I went to his headquarters, he told me, he said, Michael, my cost on just that one driver is like $900, my cost. And I'm thinking, holy cow. You know, when you're looking at something like the chorus, you know, how much and not that price is always you know what i'm saying like price always means performance it doesn't but, but you know what i'm saying but think about it how much what did, what do you think their costs on the original chorus the tweeter and the mid ranges probably a couple hundred bucks maybe not so even you know what i'm saying it's like so are they a huge upgrade i think again i haven't heard that specific model but um i'm telling you man they they just took it to a whole new level. And then Sonian says he went from the RF7 version threes, which I have those in my living room. Great speaker, but they're not JTR like level. They really aren't. Mm -hmm. Now they'll slam harder than the JTR because the JTR um, monitor speakers, they're not designed to, to hit really, really low and, and to really slam. Um, but as far as performance, mid range, yeah, there's no comparison in the mid range. Chorus have a great mid range. The La Scala's had a great mid range, but I still feel that I'm getting more performance out of my JTRs than I did out of my La Scala's. Let me try and put this mm -hmm. a different yeah. way. I really only talk about brands that I personally would put in my home. Mm -hmm. So I don't like recommending things as a dealer just to be a dealer. I mm -hmm. like to recommend things that I have experience with and that I believe are end game mm -hmm. pieces of equipment. So, so he has the course ones, the originals, the JTRs, I think you're going to eat those for lunch. Like there's breakfast and dinner. Like it won't even be a comparison. <laughs> you're going to get so much more <clears throat> accurate output out of that, out of the JTRs than you will the clips. Because the Jeff, I mean, for all intents and purposes, is a genius. I mean, what he's done with his speakers and subs, he's kind of changed the industry in a way for what he's been able to do. And once you get something like that in your theater, there's no more upgrading. It's just adding. 
And that's how I look at it. When you start getting into those level of components, mm -hmm. especially if you do the reference lines and stuff, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. So if you, if you need something like that, I do sell JTR and RTJ. Let me know. And we'll see if we can do so. There is a wait list typically with Jeff's stuff because it's yeah. popular because it's really yeah, good. Sure. Um, so just that's my two cents. Well, cool deal, man. We are right up at three hours. You guys have been awesome. You've asked some great, great questions. We had a lot of fun tonight, a lot of laughs. Um, yeah, so Paul said he's thinking of getting three LCRs. So if you are, just hit Ryan up, ryan at ascendav.net. If you got any home theater needs or upgrades, you got that itch, uh, give him a call. He's a great dude to talk to, and and he'll talk you out of something if he doesn't think it's it's in your I best I won't talk you out of that. <clears throat> yeah. I think that well, given your you, current situation, that's worth it. Yeah. yeah. So we'd love to have you guys join us for M-Wave. We've got an event that we're planning July 14th through the 16th in Kansas City at the Con Kansas City Convention Center. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Um, all the information is on the website, MidwestAVExperience.com. We sold out of all the VIP gold and the VIP uh, standard VIPs in uh, 48 hours all of those. So you guys hit those quick. So that was, that was awesome, but we still have a couple of VIP platinums. And I think one of the, um, one of my patrons is considering upgrading the platinum. So if he does, then I'll have one other ticket for VIP gold mm -hmm. come back available. So keep an eye out on the website. Um, I think there's one more quick question. The Vandersteens. Uh, let me go back here. Comments starred while you're looking for that. There it is. Let me okay. just tell you what I've got that needs to get moved. Okay. So I've got so I'm gonna put your email up here. Hang I've got an NZ7, a JVC NZ7 that needs to find a home. I've got a Kaleidoscape Strato C. Mm -hmm. And then a now end of life, not that it's out of warranty, it's just they're yeah. not making it anymore. Um Terra 12. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at Kaleidoscape, which is very, very good. Um, I have used Kaleidoscape myself. It's fantastic. It's, mm -hmm. I think, the best media endpoint <laughs> you can get. If you're thinking about Kaleidoscape, let me know. I've got two Epson LS12000s, mm -hmm. and then I've got one Denon A1H, and then one Morant 6015 that I'll need to find homes. They're forever homes, if you will. Well, lots of cool stuff. Lots, lots of cool toys, but we're, my garage is getting full. So it needs, <laughs> it needs to go, yeah. it needs to go someplace. So if you're interested in any of that or anything else, yeah. and we can certainly work some things together, mm -hmm. um, let me know. We can get you taken care of. And I will talk you out of things if it doesn't, if I feel it's not pertinent to what you're trying to do. 100%. I can't answer this one. So I'm going to, Pose this to Ryan replacing a Vandersteen sub. The Vandersteens are really, if I remember correctly, 300 watts. Mm. So I think there's a lot to be gained here. Sure. Um, any of the previously mentioned subs, specifically, my recommendations would be anything from JTR, RTJ, per listen, mm -hmm. or GSG in no particular order. Um, or if you don't want to spend that much, <clears> something <throat> like, and you're not trying to dig super low. Mm -hmm. like the Martin Logan um, Dynamo 1600X or SVS or Rhythmic. A lot of, a lot of options. There, any of those. But um, if you need something, happy to help. See what I can I'm do. Gonna, I'm going to get us out of here in less than two minutes. we got two questions. Randy, tough when you're talking seven plus channels of something like JTR price-wise anyways. 100%. They're not cheap. Mm -mm. They're just, to me, they're in game. Mm -hmm. So... Um, buy once, keep, try once, baby. If you, want, if you want to keep chasing the rabbit and upgrading, upgrading over years. Um, now not everybody needs JTR hundred percent. Yes, they do. So you you got to figure out what works for you, your budget, your needs. But, uh, and I've always been a, an advocate of build it over time. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. My system right now, I've got three JTR speakers up front, two JTR subwoofers, but I've been rocking my four clips surrounds. And four clips Atmos speakers for what three years now, two, three years. Mm -hmm. Build it over time. You know, you definitely don't have to hit it all at once because that is a big, big, big. I mean, you can. I mean, if you got the pockets, I don't have the pockets. So you can. You can certainly. But my once you experience a theater of that level, <laughs> once yeah. you hear it or see something like that, 
Come to M Wave. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Come to M Wave. Once you need to experience it. Hear it, experience it. I'm really, really hoping I'm gonna be talking to Jeff even again this week. He said he's 75 percent sure he's gonna be bringing his system to M Wave, and so if he does, you're gonna get to hear a JTR system full on, and you're just gonna rock your face off. I think it's gonna be a really, really great experience. SRW 1000 brings up a good point. Notice <clears> that there aren't a lot of JTRs that show up on the used market. That is correct. That is a very good point. Any of the speakers that you're going to see, especially yeah. on like the home theater tour, yeah, they don't show up really on used markets very often. And there's there's a reason for mm -hmm. that. And that's because yeah. you don't go anywhere else. Yeah. You side grade. And we've anybody in any of these home theaters that you guys will experience is just yeah. built theaters that and everyone's different. Yeah. Um, they found what they like and there's no going a different direction. Just yeah. adding more. Eric, appreciate the love and support, man. He says, thanks. And he also threw a $4, $5 super chat. Appreciate thanks, you, brother. brother. Always appreciated. Last question of the night. Derek, youth man, did the PB Ultras, so I had the PB 16s, two of them, in my room. Did it pressurize them? Now, my room is 13 foot wide, 19 foot deep, 10 foot ceiling. Absolutely pressurized my room. That was the first subwoofers that I was like, Holy cow. That was the first time I had something in the adjacent room fall off a shelf. I'd never experienced that in, in my home theater. So absolutely. They have great output. The thing that made JTR excel way above the PB ultra is not only did I get even more output from the RS twos, I don't have any port chuffing because there are no ports in it. Um, the PB 16s, if you crank them, especially like edge of tomorrow. If you crank those, even getting close to reference, doing edge of tomorrow, those things will flop around like crazy because that's really, really low extension. Uh, and they're just not meant to handle that. And especially at that output. And so they only went down to, <clears throat> excuse me, about, uh, I say only, they were sub 20, which is awesome. If you can get a, a subwoofer to hit down to 20 Hertz or a little bit that's below, really good. fantastic um, to me, but I think that's the minimum. Like that's what you want to strive for in home theater, 20 Hertz, 17, 15, those types of things. But when you've got a subwoofer capable of a flat frequency response in my room down to five Hertz. He's not lying. Somebody told, and now I don't know the math on this, but somebody told me it would take probably eight PB ultras to be able to get down to five Hertz at that same level. No, it would take more than that. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's insane. It'd take more than that because my two four thousands as far as output mm -hmm. equal roughly, and Jonathan and I have talked about this before, mm -hmm. eight of his 18s. Yeah. So what Jeff has been able to do with his subs is just insane. Yeah. Um, the drivers that are on those things and from any of the brands that I recommended, they're just in a different level. So that's funny. Chuck. Yes. Um, the question is, can you upgrade? <laughs> I love Brian's response. He's like, yeah, but you gotta be in, you're in line. Shoot me an email. Um, Michael at youthmanreviews.com. Just or type hit it me in up chat. or hit me up on Patreon or you do that. Um, some of you guys are patrons. Um, reach out to me if you're interested in upgrading if these gentlemen do upgrade to VIP Platinum, like I said, that will open up however many. Does that make sense? So if we're sold out of one, then it will open up one of those. So, um, but yeah, shoot me an email. We can definitely take care of you there. Three hours. Yeah, that's probably that's a good one. Long we need to do yeah. this more. Yeah. I think the community likes this. Yeah. Well, we have fun, man. The thing is, is that oh, you guys have questions. and That was the question. Do you guys like these longer streams? Oh, yeah. Let us know. Because I'd like to know. Is this a good format for you? Really what we try to do with this is I, I just want to be, I want this to be as beneficial to you, the consumer, the home theater enthusiast as possible. Mm -hmm. And the best way I know how is to just answer the questions that you have. Um, typically, we'll start off the live stream with some kind of topic. But tonight, we really want to just give you some updates on M-Wave because we had a lot of uh, exciting things for that. Appreciate that, Michael. Appreciate that, SRW1000. Uh, no, I don't feel pressured at all, Lewicki. My, mm -hmm. Here's the deal. My, my wife's in bed at like 8 o'clock. My so, wife's in bed. 
So by the time I start the live stream, she's good. I just enclosed. So this right here, this room used to be really open floor plan. And so I know she could hear me. So now there's a barrier here to my bedroom, which is that way. So, and I, if I need to, I could always shut the door. So it's not bothering her. My daughter's asleep. So no, nah, man, I, I'm, I'm good to go, but, um, always enjoy these moist conversations. <laughs> <sighs> That's hilarious, man. But no, nah, man, we just like to have fun. You guys are cracking me up. So it looks like you do enjoy the longer format. So, um, we try honestly, all right. So here's the true too. We, a lot of times we'll try to keep it to an hour, and the biggest reason is just because we know Jonathan really needs to get off and, and be with Michael family. and I don't have any lives. So it really doesn't matter. No, I mean, this is, this is my job. I mean, this is what I get the privilege of doing Yep. Um, because of, you know, YouTube AdSense, which are the ads that play at the beginning, middle and the end um, because of things like you guys using my, um, the links in the videos and the description when you, click on Amazon and you buy anything on Amazon, we get a small percentage. It's like 3% of the sale. Um, even if it's not the product that you click on, those things help. When you buy an M-Wave ticket, those things help. When you do uh, chats, uh, what do you call them? Um, super super chat. chats and super stickers and uh, join on Patreon. All of that stuff allows me to really just try to provide as much value to you guys as possible, whether it's build an event that we really feel is going to be super valuable to you as a consumer, not only in just getting to hear and demonstrate or not demonstrate, but hear and demo different brands that maybe you've never had an opportunity to, to hear. I have the privilege of literally traveling all around the world sometimes to experience some really cool home theaters, but I realize you guys don't. So we're trying to bring that experience to you through this uh, event called M wave, which is Midwest AV experience. So, but we just, we want to try to give back as much as we can and be of value to you guys, but also just build a great community. I mean, my, my audience, my subscribers, you guys really, really mean the world to me. I've met, man, I was just at an event this past week met one of my patrons, like, you know, I've seen him on zoom and stuff, but I've never met him face to face, had a chance to do that. Several people noticed me and came over and said, Hey, aren't you youth man? And watch your videos. Love it. You know, so those types of things really get me excited. Hey, being able to hang out and build relationships with you guys. Um, great danger said he's going to be bringing the wife. That's awesome, man. That can be dangerous. Maybe that's why your <laughs> name name's grave danger. No, he brings the wife. So he doesn't spend as much. That's why she's coming. She's like, no, buddy, you ain't buying that. You can demo. Maybe, That's what maybe I can convince her. I've done that a couple times. That's hilarious. No, honestly, she may come and go. And the cool thing is some of you guys have wives and girlfriends that are just as much into this as you are. And that's super, super cool. But it's very rare, too. Um, Man, that's cool. So SRW1000 says 30 years ago had been in inconceivable for a show like this. Thanks for putting these on every week. Appreciate it, man. Energy was palatable tonight. So in other words, normally it's not. I don't know. Full send it, brother. Always enjoy the. Oh, yeah. Too funny, man. But yeah. Oh, speaking of this. So next, I have to confirm this with him, but next week we should have, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We should have Life of Bliss, Kyle Bliss on the oh, channel. Oh, yeah, finally. So, yeah, he had some rescheduling. Failed on you for the Super Bowl. Thing called Super Bowl. No, Being a can't. Chiefs fan from us living in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah we canceled it that night. Um, but, yeah, man, so we're going to have fun uh, with him next week. So I'll touch space with him uh, tonight and later on this week and confirm that. But he's a great, great dude. Kyle's actually going to be doing our emceeing at M-Wave this year. So we're going to um, have some fun with him and that'll free me up to, to be able to um, make some content. Cause I sadly, I didn't, I didn't make any content last year. So I'd love to be able to have some promotional videos for M wave. And um, so, but anyway, there you go. Bring the wife to get her by and best way to go. That was funny, dude. Hope you have time to mingle and not be shooting the whole time. So, yeah. So last year, Randy, I, that's all I did. I mingled. I didn't shoot anything. So the cool thing is this year I'm hiring somebody. Um, so we're going to have an actual videographer there, photographer, so that that will free me up. Now I will need to go 
to each one of the vendors rooms because I want to I want to interview them. I want to talk about their products. I want them to share with my audience, you know, because let's face it. A lot of people aren't going to come to Emway. You know, they may live in California. That's a long flight. That's a big expense. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of people that are going to be at M wave. And so I just want to be able to, to share that information with people on my channel. So there will be times that I have to shoot, but it definitely is not one of those things I'll be filming the whole time because I want to enjoy the event. I want to participate in these experiences. Um, I want to hear these big, massive subwoofers that certain brands are bringing to M wave this year. Super excited about that. So, uh, Appreciate that, man. Looking to attend M Wave this year. Appreciate the hard work. It's been a passion. It really has been a passion project. I remember sitting in Ryan's home theater late, late, late one night, and we just began to dream. And we're like, man, what would it Was be this like before or after we realized we had to film the whole thing again a second time? Um, what do you mean? Was this oh, during no, no. your home theater tour? <laughs> no, no, no. This or was, was this after that. one. So this was the projector this comparison. Was the projector one. That's so right. We were, we were at right. your house, and I said, Ryan, I said, what we did this weekend at your house with 20, 30 guys was phenomenal. I mean, this was just so much fun. I've never experienced anything like this in the AV space. I'm surprised your wife let you come back. <laughs> so I said, what would it look like if we did this? I, I told him, I said, we need to do this every year. And he's like, well, we do this quite often up here in Kansas City. I said, yeah, but there's not a lot of people that get a chance to experience that. Could we bring it kind of to the masses, basically? And so we just begin to brainstorm and, and just think this thing over and go and kind of dream. Like, What would that even look like? And so we're building something, honestly, that nobody else has built. And so there's definitely some challenges there. There's definitely some some things we're trying to figure out. But what I'm so grateful for is we finished up M wave last year. And from the first time ever trying this, we came away after getting tons of feedback from attendees. Overwhelmingly, everybody was like, Michael, this was amazing. Like this was a phenomenal event. Yeah. There were some things like scheduling, um, you know, things took longer than we, what we expected small things like that, but they're like, overall, man, you just killed it. This was so much fun and I'll definitely be back next year. And so that was fantastic. And you guys gave us some really good feedback on things that we could improve. Even in the VIP, we've already made some changes to the VIP, the VIP platinum, um, the different tiers because of feedback. How the event runs, the location. and Yeah. A yeah. lot of stuff. This event is very much designed and built <laughs> around your you guys. This isn't 100%. about us this isn't a money making yep. endeavor this is all about trying to create something for the community that doesn't exist and that yeah. michael and i would really enjoy and that makes yeah. a lot of sense in that yeah. um we wish we would have had i think when we were first oh, getting man. into this space it would have been that'd amazing. been so cool yeah it would have but here it is now yeah so Yay. we're trying to make that happens what happens in case he stays in case he accepts the subs and amps but your cash stays in KC. Too funny. <laughs> Somebody keeps calling me from Omaha, Nebraska. So we'll find out. They can leave me a message. Um, At 11, 15? A mm -hmm. Dang, Just man. a pleasure listening and enjoying so much diversity in the comments. What a perfect hobby to have. Absolutely, man. Enjoyed the live. So SRW1000 was there last year. Enjoyed the live projector comparison from last year. Was the next best thing to being there. That's awesome, man. It's it's one of those things, like one of the things that I got from M-Wave is I never realized how much masking changes the actual, like what your brain perceives on screen. That was the wildest thing. Mm -hmm. I always thought masking was just to make the gray bars black to hide them. Well, it does that, but what it does is it increases the perceived contrast. And it was so bizarre watching Seymour, Chris Seymour, the owner of Seymour, he puts on this masking on a lower end projector. And originally we, you know, my brain looked at the higher end projector and it went, was, man, uh, that, one look, that one looks better. 6,000, the Sony 6,000 against the 7,000. And the 7,000 did look better. Yeah. But when he put masking on, the 6,000 looked better because the masking was on the 6,000. And then he'd crazy. take it off and then the 7,000 looked better. And, and the whole nothing changed, yeah. but it was just the masking. 
And the whole crowd was like, whoa, you just hear this, whoa, like, I didn't know it could do that. And so things like that, those are experiences you physically just can't get without being there in person. So, man, we'd love to have you join us. Chuck, appreciate the $10 super chat. Enjoyed the stream tonight. We enjoyed bringing it to you, man. We've had a good time. Maybe we need to do um, these longer ones more. Yeah, maybe, maybe every so often, maybe once a month or something. I don't know. Maybe every time. I don't know. I don't I care. Don't know. As long as we get, as long as we give Jonathan permission, and we have every time, we're like, <laughs> look, dude, Jonathan, you cannot leave. Well, I, I know he feels bad. He's like, oh, nah, man, I no, feel awkward good. saying, "Hey, guys, peace out. I gotta go." I never want him to feel that way, man. Go be with your family. We'll do this all night. Um, so Randy says, I "Wonder if the lo, oh, sorry, I wonder if the location would ever change to different areas of the country to spread love wealth." So here's the thing. Is it possible? A hundred percent. What I tell people though, somebody said, Hey, do you think you could bring it to blank? Let's just say California. And here's my response. Dude, it's way easier for you to jump on a flight and come over to Kansas than it is for us to move an entire event from us to you. The hard, so could the hard part about yes. this is since I'm effectively designing how all of this works, yeah. like Michael's like the marketing guy behind yeah. all of it he does all the website development all of that and i'm designing and building out mm -hmm. all of the experiences how they're going to work how the rooms are going together mm -hmm. um for me to get that stuff organized because i'm located in kansas city if it was in a different state it would be very very hard it adds to the complexity of and it, it adds to the cost of us yeah. doing it right because yeah Michael and I have to at least break even in this endeavor or we will both be divorced. So, so here, here, true story. I don't think I've ever shared this. Publicly, no, you haven't. I think it's hilarious. So I'm at it is now. now. Yeah. So I, this is the first year we've done M wave where we're before we even get there. My wife's like, you know, you've been working on this thing, like literally almost every single day planning. Like Ryan said, I do all of the, 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 any graphics that you see, the banners that are at M-Wave, the table covers, all of the emails, all of the registration, the shopping cart. I built that. I built the website. Um, everything on that side, content creation, promoting it, doing the newsletter, everything, that's all me. Ryan is actually handling the event, all of the demos, all the working with the vendors, finding out what equipment he needs to buy to make these video switching or audio switching um, you know, work. And so he's doing that. So we're before M wave. She's like, um, are you going to make any money off of this? I'm like, I'll be honest, baby. I don't know. I have no idea. She's like, so you, you've been because working. I had all the money. I had the bank account. The PayPal <laughs> it, and it's in his that. PayPal, but Ryan didn't even know how much he had spent. You know, he's just like, I mean, I, to, I had an I idea. Buy, I need to buy a thousand dollars worth of cables and this, and this didn't get shipped. So we didn't really know. So no lie, man, I'm, I'm at his house and we're, I think we had finished After the up, event. I think we had finished up the event. I'm texting my wife and she's like, Hey, did you sit down with Ryan to kind of, you know, calculate and figure out where you're at? No. Are you in the black? Are you in the red? And I went, I've asked him. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, man, she, she looks at me or she texts me. She says, look, if you can't figure out whether or not you've made anything or not. And it's not about the money, but I mean, think about it. We've spent, Oh, here was the other thing. I didn't tell you this. I, I don't remember what it was, but we were, we were kind of cutting it close financially oh, I remember. on a certain yeah, thing. We talked about this and she's like, we really need the money right now. This would be, Oh, I know what it was. She took a six month leave of absence yes. from yeah. work. That's yeah. what it was. That's what it was. So we took a $30,000 pay cut so that my wife could stay home for six months. Cause it was just, it was, it was bizarre that year. She's a school teacher. She just had a really, really rough year. She's taught for 20 years, maybe 21 years. And so financially, man, like our bank accounts doing this number every single month for six months. So she says, here's the deal. And I know she was kind of kidding, but I thought it was hilarious. She said, if, you don't come back with some money. You need to find a ride home from the airport. I don't think she was <laughs> kidding. I don't think that was kidding. Wives do not kid about that. I was dying, man. So literally like I'm about to get on my flight in a couple hours that day. And I'm like, Hey Ryan, is there any way, dude, I'm serious. I, I'd like to be on good terms when I get back to my life. 
can we just sit down and just go through your receipts? And so he's literally pulling up laptop, pulling up Amazon. Okay. I've spent, okay. Yeah. I spent that. All right. And so I'm writing up on a spreadsheet and <laughs> tallying it all up. And it, it was just such a relief that we, I'm an organized black. person, but not organized to the extent yeah. typically of money. I, yeah. So we're that much was just, more organized in that regard this year, but yeah. we were okay. Yeah, we, we did oh fine. His God. wife picked him up from the airport. Like, Thank you, good. man. I, like, I got to bring <laughs> home something. I really do. As long as I can, you know. It was it's a lot of time going yeah. into this, and it's just you and I putting this yeah. on. So it's that's the hardest thing. But it's it's been so much fun, and it's so worth it. Because, like I said, what I love is the fact that we're creating something from scratch that nobody else is doing, and I truly believe that we're creating something that is valuable to the home theater community, especially. You know, I just went to an event in Tampa. Great event. It's a trade show type of event. Um, the audio, Florida Audio Expo, great event. Will you remember it next year? No. Um, it's it's all two-channel stuff for one thing. So there's a lot of really, really high-end, really, really expensive stuff. And not to knock them. There's definitely a market for that. I'm a home theater guy. But I don't see any events, number one, that's really focused on the home theater enthusiasts. And they're definitely not providing experiences like what we're providing. I mean, who in the world in their right mind is going to take a room and try to let you ABC compare a butt kicker to a near field subwoofer to a like a um, a boss platform type of thing? Who's going to allow anybody to come and compare on 150 inch screens? seven, eight different projectors side by side in blind comparisons. I mean, I know there are other people that are doing that, but those aren't public events, you know, for the most part. There's 10 people that are in that room. There's 20 people that are in that room and then they, they just share it, you know, online. And so we're just trying to create something that isn't, that nobody's doing, you know, and to be a oh, part of Oh, there's plenty that, of stuff here that people aren't even doing in private. Yeah. I mean, like the room correction stuff. 100%. That was, yeah. yeah. So yeah. to be a part of that, something from the ground up is super special to me. And I've, I'm just extremely grateful over the past five years. I've just seen God open up door after door after door in various aspects. I mean, being able to fly over to the Philippines to check out some really cool home theaters, to be able to film a $1 million Star Wars home theater, phenomenal, to be able to start an event with a good friend, Ryan, you know. Um, to travel and I do and, want to pre I do want to say that Michael and I only knew each other <laughs> for a month when we decided to do this and, the, and it only actually spent like probably a grand total of 24 hours with each yeah. other yeah so it's true I don't really know why we decided yeah. to do this yeah. like Michael and I have only known each other yeah. for a little over a year yeah if that's that weird anybody yeah. it is weird and we're already like hey man we need to go on a ski trip together next year so it's that kind of relationship and friendship, mm. man. It's It's been awesome. It's something else I do want to point out is that while, yes, it's Michael and I doing the event, the event volunteers. wouldn't be possible without yes. people like Jonathan Sheldon Grant yes. um, giving up their time. All yep. of our volunteers that yep. did things last year and will hopefully help us out this year. Yeah. I mean, this event wouldn't be possible with No, it, with physically, them. yeah, we can't make it happen. And, and the cool thing is like even... I know if I wasn't running the event, I would be volunteering because I just want to be a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. to me, it's not work hooking up speakers and moving speakers because you're getting to play with these cool toys, you know? Um, so, yeah, absolutely, man. Yes, Grave Danger. I am amped up for M-Wave for sure. So don't forget we need to do the pub crawl after the sub crawl. I love it, man. So I'll be a designated driver. I don't mind that. Power and light I'm, is walking I'll distance from the event space, which I think there's like 15 bars in a 100 yard radius. Wow. So yes, yeah, so if you want to drink, you're welcome to it, man. There's plenty of stuff out there. So Michael and I will be too tired. I'll come out and hang out with you though. You think we'll have time? I don't know. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> I did masking after being at M wave. Awesome. Derek, that's super, super M wave's cool. dangerous. Yeah. It exposes you to some different stuff that you yeah. didn't know was there before. You may not, have known you wanted to spend money. So yeah, absolutely. 314 Carpenter, man, super grateful for Jonathan, grateful for Sheldon, Grant and Ryan. Definitely. I mean, they're opening up their home to strangers, man, but here's the cool thing. These are strangers that are passionate 
talking about home theater and they just want some cool experiences. So absolutely, man. Tours are going to be epic. Absolutely, Randy. We're super excited for that. Glad I didn't have to drive from Texas to take you home from the airport. Oh, golly. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys. Well, I think we'll... Oh, now what, what was this one? That's a bonus for platinum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll come pick you up, man. So, uh, let's see. I get it. Just ended up being more expensive than I thought to attend in, in Kansas City. Yeah. Would love to attend every year, but probably not. Probably. Absolutely. And we totally get that. So, even with uh, general gonna, mission tickets and a number of days. We're going to try and do, I think, live streaming this year. Mm hmm and that was a big reason why we tried Kyle Bliss to get MC. Yeah, I, I know, but I think, <laughs> I think Michael, if you just yeah. did what you were norm, what you would normally do, go have conversations and stuff. And I think we'll eat that up. Not that you yeah. have to do anything dedicated, but it allows yeah. people a window to be able to yeah, be there sure. without yeah. being there, and that's yeah. that's really valuable. And I gotta figure this thing out. It's like it's losing okay. focus. You're on yeah. autofocus. I am, but why is it? It's tired. Yeah. Oh, We've been go. going for three and a half hours. <laughs> That's all good. It's like, man. what are you doing to me? Yeah. I'm done. I can't do it. What is this? Ames, Iowa has screens some more? Seymour. Seymour screens? They're in Iowa. What is Ames? Is that like a store? That's a city. Oh, okay. okay. Ames, Iowa. Oh, yeah. Okay. Seymour's in Iowa. If you oh, need a I Seymour think... screen, hit me up. I deal with Chris and Evan at Seymour all the time. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, so SRW 1000, we had, um, last year we had Stop the FOMO. He came and he did a great job and during the live stream. Him and what was the other gentleman's name? Andy. Andy. So he was one of our calibrators, uh, him and Nick. And so Andy and him did a great job. And they're, they were perfect for that. I would not be the best host for that live stream because they know the technical side of it. And they're able to better articulate what they're seeing visually in two side-by-side -side comparisons. So FOMO, uh, last time I heard, he is coming. And so if he's willing to do it, we'd love to have him do the live stream again, maybe during that comparison. So well, but we may be great for you. You're that. great at leading those conversations and then yeah. having people answer the questions. And yeah, yeah. I'm just not the guy that would be, yeah. No, I wouldn't be opposed to being a part of the conversation. I just need somebody smarter than me. And is more knowledgeable in those areas. Man, is this thing still going crazy? It's tired. I think I moved over or something. Cause no, it... I think it's just tired. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do. It's tired of <laughs> tired of looking at your ugly face. Like so, God. part of it. I need to get. So check this out. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So I need to get that. That's part of what I've been doing here in this room is trying to make this more conducive to live streaming. So mm -hmm. I've got my old backup camera up here. Um, so that's it's a doing much, a good job. It's just yeah. losing focus. But part of it is the fact that I need to I need to get that further down here, not up over a 32 inch monitor looking down. So it's a pretty steep angle. It probably can't see my eyes very well. And I've got it on eye tracking. So if I'm looking up this way, it's one thing. So it's like, oh, I can see your eyes now. And plus this light over here isn't going to be as good as that one. And so I think that'll help out with that as well. Um, any news on a new 4K demo disc? I haven't heard any. I did run into a gentleman with DTSX or DTS, I guess, is the actual company. Um, I tried to, I'm like, hey, you know, uh, Nick introduced him from SVS. And uh, so I was talking to him. I'm like, hey, uh, I think you hooked me up with a disc because he hooked Nick up one. I'm like, where's my disc, man? He didn't give me one, though. So. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if they're new disc or if it's mm. just, you know, one of their old ones. So don't know. Oh, by the way, I like the play button. Thank you, man. So that's one of those things that it just represents five years, 600. How many videos do I have? I think I have 560 videos on the channel. So, you know, the plaque, honestly, it was way less exciting than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be heavier and sturdier and it, it's okay. It's just a piece of plastic. It really is. There's nothing fancy about it, but it's what it represents. It represents you guys watching my videos. It represents the connections that I've made over the past five years, the business that I've built, the live streams that we've done together. All those types of things, man. Um, 
And, uh, but yeah, so that to me, that's what it represents. So it, I'm just grateful. I really, really am. I'm grateful for you guys for watching, for liking, sharing, being a part of the community, asking great questions. Yeah, switch to manual focus. That's one thing. So the hard part about that, Jay, is if, say, for instance, I want to show you something, then it would, and it may not even focus on that. Oh, I got to get it in my front of my face. So see, if I did something like that, then if I had it on manual focus, it'd just be out of focus because I'm using a really shallow depth of field. I am think I'm at uh, 1.8, maybe. Mm. Maybe I bumped it up to 2, 2.8. I don't know what I'm at. Um, what am I at? Damn. Um, 2. Yeah, so you know, doing that definitely provides some, and, and again, this is, it's not temporary setup, but it's definitely not ideal. I mean, I've got my, one of my lights from my theater room when I, and it's really a backup light. It's not even a, a main light, but I'm using it as a key light right now. So hopefully I'll get that other one set up. I just got to drill some holes in the wall and figure out where to, where to best mount it. Yeah. And I've got to get some acoustical treatments put up and, mm -hmm. Oh, well, room's kind of a mess. You guys just can't see it. Yeah, Carlos, I've mentioned that before. I think it'd be awesome. And I think it would it would benefit AVRs if they would include a, you know, kind of a demo disc just to highlight what the It's probably the a licensing could do. thing, though. Could be. So I think it'd be great, but it yeah, pretty much it's always going to be in the hands of dealers. Um, There's some websites that you can get some demo material from. Yeah. So, but. All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. It's been three hours and 30 minutes. You guys are awesome. There's still 100 people hanging out with us. So love and appreciate you guys. Like I said, head over to M West. M West. M West. Right, sorry. Almost Midwest. said moist. That's what you no, were thinking about. Not. Midwest AV Experience.com. Would love to have you join us in July, July 14th through the 16th for M Wave. Hope you guys have an incredible week. I got a lot of videos to be cranking out for you guys. So be on the lookout. So. I right, gotta man. send you another tool since the last one got lost. Remind yeah. me to do that tomorrow. Okay. I'll get I'll one out to you. Cool, man. All right, guys. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Have a great week. See you guys later.